I've come to the conclusion, no matter how a woman votes, mm -hmm. they're all Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to explain why. You brought up warmongers like Lindsey. Lindsey Graham. But now, do you think that he was traveling to the Middle East for nefarious purposes, or do you think he's got a male side piece? I there? think it's a little bit of both. A little bit of both. He's over he's there got, got one of those dancing boys. Yeah, I think so. You know? So I am more pro-Israel. Granted, like, I know that Kanye was speaking some truth up until he started being like, Hitler wasn't that bad. Yeah, we'll talk about truth. We'll talk about politics. And yeah, we'll get a lot of views, but we're not going to get any growth in our social media it's very difficult whereas if i came out tomorrow and said my cat decided to be non-binary i'd have a million and some of it would be <laughs> haters and some of it'd be like how brave of that pussy cat to finally come out hey guys let's take a quick break in the conversation i want to remind you about my friends over at mypatriotsupply.com they're good friends of mine they've been a long time partner of this show i know you feel like you just kind of have that sense that you're being lied to you know why you have that sense because you are the media is not telling you the truth they're never going to tell you how bad things are but you've got that gut feeling that something is amiss and I think you're pretty much hovering over the truth. No matter what comes down the pike, you better be prepared. Take care of you. Take care of your family. Make sure that you're doing that. And I promise you, if you head over to my special website, preparewithchad.com, it's going to take you right over to My Patriot Supply. They've got the built-in discount. And right now, you can load up with the three-month emergency food kits packed with ready-hour foods from My Patriot Supply, and you're going to save $200 per kit. I want to make sure that you heard me. That's $200 per kit. That's the biggest savings that they put out there. And you need a kit for every member of your family. Three months of delicious breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drinks, all the stuff you need over 2,000 calories a day to keep you strong when times get hard. So preparewithchad.com. It's the biggest deal they, they do. $200 off each kit. It's going to be delivered fast, it's going to be delivered free, and it's going to arrive in discreet packaging so your neighbors don't know what it is you're getting. In any order that you place uh, by 3 o'clock on any given day, it will ship out same day. So go to my special website, preparewithchad.com. Preparewithchad.com. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. We're just going to chill today. Uh, got some a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we're taping this, we're, as we do, we're kind of pre-taping this a few days early, so... We'll try to make it as evergreen as possible, but I want to get into some of the hot topics from a micro view of what's going on in our world today. Obviously, it's insanity. Um, I want to encourage you, while I've still got your attention before you tune me out, go to watchchad.com for all the fun stuff is. we got a lot of shows coming up out on the road, having fun, doing a number of shows with Zach Rushing. You guys follow and know him. He's a lot of fun. And so um, check us out. Watchchad.com has got all the information you need. Also, leave a rating and review where podcasts are offered. Five stars is what we deserve. And I don't care what you say after that, but just do it, okay? We're doing pretty good. Rankings are pretty good. I mean, those are all vanity. I don't think they really matter, but I'd love to be able to, you know, send that stuff out to our sponsors and say, look how good we are at selling your stuff, man. But we are thankful for our sponsors. Um, thanks for tuning in once again. All right. He's been on the show before. I've been on his show. We're buddies. And so I thought this was a good time to spend, to kind of do a chill episode and get real with you guys and just let you sit in on a conversation. Anthony Michael Russo, he is the host of Truth Will Set You Free, Awake cheat, Not cheat. Woke. Cheat sheet. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was, well, I, you've always, I've always told you, like, you've got the best slogans. Like, the Awake Not Woke. I was like, God, I want to put that on a t-shirt, but Anthony already did it. And um, the Truth Will Set You Free, and you were doing Blunt Force Discussion which was one-on-one -on -one conversations. And so I asked you, I was like, you've just kind of put everything under the um, umbrella now. Truth will set you free. Yeah, easiest. Yeah. I feel that encompasses everything. Truth encompasses discussion, <laughs> yeah. awake, all that. you got some great guests. I've, I've actually kind of got guest envy on some of the <laughs> folks. You, I mean, I've had a lot of the folks that you've had. Like, you just had J.P. Spears on there. I've had J.P. I've known him for a number of years. He's a lot of fun. And um, but, you, but it's good. Like, I went in when I went in to do your episode, uh, do your show – like you were taking all these notes, you were writing all this stuff out and doing all these kind of deals. And I was like, all right, I appreciate the hard work here. I wish I had a little more of that ethic, you know? You've got a photographic memory, though. I don't know about that, but Pretty it's close. decent. But I, but I, you know, I, um, I was telling CJ the other day, I said, my gift is you can drop me in on pretty much any situation and I can bullshit my way through it. Yeah. That's pretty much the deal. See, I can do that. I can navigate with bullshit, yeah. but I cannot, like when it comes to making sure, I've, like a, I have to make sure the the memory is jogged by some kind of visual. Who you so during football season, people see your mug on TV. Uh, you're out there at uh, you're 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 always doing the big football games and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. You were out there a lot in Colorado doing covering the uh, 
Coach Prime. Coach Prime. All of his yeah. stuff. How, how wild was that? That was, I, that was actually insane. So, again, I, I've – COVID took away a lot of my love for sports. Like I just stopped caring. I got yeah. more into how important it is to get into politics. And then that gig with them, I'm the main MC for, for big noon kickoff. And it made me fall back in love with sports and like the storyline of sports. And although the year ended up just absolute garbage for Colorado, <laughs> Colorado, I think the last game we went to was the only one that was close. Um, we did three games. We, we followed the hottest storyline. It's like, ESPN has the SEC, which is always interesting. Mm -hmm. Fox has Big Noon or has uh, um, Big Ten, and that has its limits. You got Michigan, you've got Ohio State. Turned out to be a great year, but Colorado, where we were able to go a little bit outside of that and non ESPN games, non SEC games, it was it was super fun. And those students were all about it. And I also learned that Colorado has the most fit student body of anywhere in the country because they actually do things. With they it. do things. Yeah. They got the high altitudes. So it, it takes a little more to breathe. Yeah. Colorado is a healthy state in regards to that. People yeah. are, and everybody wants to hike. Like I dated a girl from Colorado one time and I'd go out there to visit her and she said, let's go on a hike. And I was like, F you, hike. I can barely breathe. <laughs> I, I, like they sell the little oxygen canisters yeah. in the stores out there. Mm -hmm. I can every time I go to Colorado, like if I'm there doing a series of shows or whatever event I'm at, by like late in day two, yeah. I'm like, God, am I having a heart attack? <laughs> you know? Do you get that? The no, I, I, stuff? I have good. Yeah, I'm a snow, I, don't. I can snowboard. I can run long distance running. Yeah. Uh, so I'm good with, but, but I know what you're talking. Like you can, it feels a little bit different. Yeah. But yeah, that's how they train out there. Yeah. Last a uh, couple years ago, I was doing a. Uh, we were performed at a fair, big fair in uh, Bozeman, Montana. And Steve Helms was there with me playing guitar. And he goes, like day two, he goes, man, I, I'm sick. Something's wrong. Like, I think I'm, I might be dying, dude. I might need to go to the emergency room. I was like, altitude, bro. Yeah, 100%. Altitude. And it like, he was relieved to know that yeah. he was going to survive. Well, I had a I had an illness that happened in Colorado, which was the fact that I finally discovered that I was old. HIV? Uh, and, oh, no, oh, no, not HIV. No, 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 they, not AIDS. Uh, <laughs> HIV. Or no, no, no. Wait, age. There you go. No, age. it was it was insane. I I it finally hit at the age of forty or forty one, whatever I was this year. And uh, there are the girls that were from the university, and they you know they do the thing with the phone now, where like they get you to say something. Yeah. And. Uh, on the phone it was, my mom thinks you're hot. I was like, no longer, I have no longer any appeal to college students. Mm -hmm. It is now, they want me to FaceTime their mother. Yeah, wait till you hit 51. <laughs> I now, when I'm at a show, and Jesse Payton makes fun of it all the time, You'll Jesse will be out and he'll say, well, I tour with Chad Prather. And they're like, we don't know who that is. And they're like, your mom does, <laughs> your grandmother does. It's so... I'll have people all the time that these girls will come up and want to take a picture. And I'm like, see, I still got it. And they're like, my mom loves you. <laughs> Can we please, you know, send a picture to her or whatever? So it just is what it is. It At least somebody loves us. Yeah. At least somebody loves us. But you're, right now, you're out there hyping up the crowd, which is a fun job. Yeah. It's challenging, I know, because I've done that kind of sort of stuff too, not on that scale. But, uh, you know, college football, I would think that's a pretty good environment to get out there and have fun with people. But you got canceled. A few years ago. Before this. Before all of that. Yeah. That was years ago. And I'm also not allowed, like... You can't, my, can you still not talk about that much? When I'm at, when I'm working at that event, I have to still be very careful. I've been told, like, hey, right. keep your politics out of it. Now, the cool part that I learned this last year is, like, kids start saying things. You get, you know, build a little relationship with them. Because I run around in circles, but I also talk to them beforehand. There's a lot more conservative kids than... I think people let like lead on. They'll make yeah. some comments and I'll be like, oh, he's, you know, they want, they want me to be a little politically correct. They want me to make jokes that are a little, a little over the line. And some of the people right. that you would look at and go, oh, that pink hair, purple, they are laughing just with the rest of them because it's just part of a group. And that's kind of the, the reason I got back into college sports is because all of a sudden I can see that the younger people in this country are sick of walking on eggshells. Yeah. And then when it comes to sports, it brings it brings all groups together. So I that's what I like. Well, but I was canceled. And political correctness is is a bullshit doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the younger generation especially is is definitely sick of that. Like mm -hmm. they're not they're like I've even seen I I was looking on a thread. This will get controversial in this conversation, but I like it. I was on a thread the other day just kind of in the rabbit hole and and you know, there's there's this trend right now, like on Instagram, of people saying, "Oh, this is Instagram has become a place where white people can go and laugh at people using the N word," and like they're seeing all the kind of stuff. Like there's a trend now to make jokes about black people and yeah. specifically use the N word. 
And there were people down there who in there, and you could tell they were younger people, and they were just like, just bring the word back. <laughs> like it's a word. Stop being bothered by it. Right. And this one black guy says, yeah, motherfucker, bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. And I was like, okay, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. Uh, like, yeah, head, head, to, head to the hood and bring it back. <laughs> what, do you, uh, what airline do you fly typically? Well, uh, American historically, because I was in DFW, but now that I'm in the Houston area, is United. Do you have, and I hate United. Have you seen the videos on the, the, you know, they have the free movies. There's a movie called Blackified. Yeah. Have you seen it? <laughs> no. It's, it's an eight. I know, though. I had to, I, I'm like, there's 30 minutes left in my flight. I, I was watching Wonka, which was actually quite good. Was it good? It was actually pretty I've good. I've been on the fence. I yeah. haven't watched it. It's worth it on an airplane when it's free. And then there's 30 minutes left in the flight, and I'm like, this is blackified. I know I'm going to get angry. I know I'm going to get triggered by watching this. Right. And it's this white woman that sees it, that is the Karen. Her name's Karen, actually. And she's and the neighbor, right? She's, and she just complains about the, the nearby park that has all these black people and she's calling them in and then she wants to know what it feels like to be black. This the this hand comes through the screen giving it like black a fire cream. And <laughs> and she goes to the park and, and they think that she's homeless because she doesn't have shoes on and she like magically transforms. And it is the most woke piece of garbage on the planet. Really? And like, she's just, she thinks she's black. Everybody's looking at her like she's insane. She's saying these crazy things. She gets her hair braided because they think she's homeless. And then all of a sudden she like, in the corner, she says, my N-words. And they're like, whoa, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy yeah. tiger. And then the cops come and <laughs> she ends up getting shot. It was a very weird situation. No kidding. It's the weirdest 17 minutes of your life. Yeah, I will never yeah. watch it. I'll never watch I it. I wouldn't. Hey guys, let's take a quick break in the program and let me remind you that, uh, you know, the meat in your grocery store aisle, it probably didn't come from America. That's right. Um, it's mystery meat. You don't know where it's from. Not only that, but when you see that product of the USA sticker that's on the meat packaging, it just means that it was packaged in America. It doesn't mean it was raised here. So uh, that's not what our friends over at Backyard Butchers are all about. Listen, they're a Christian conservative Texas-based company that's dedicated to delivering not only the best meat, but the best deals and quality of chicken and beef to you. Their American-raised, American-harvested meat comes from their own backyard and they deliver across the nation. The meat is grass-fed and grain-finished, meaning that everything they deliver to you is going to taste, it's gonna taste amazing. Trust me, my freezer is full of it, and I cook it almost daily, if I'm being honest. Uh, so cut the frustration in the meat aisle. Go to backyardbutchers.com slash Chad. Save an extra 20% off your first order, and if you subscribe, you get another 10% off, plus free shipping. So, they got over half a million happy customers across America, hundreds of five-star reviews, and an American-based customer service team you can trust that you're being taken care of. Again, backyardbutchers.com slash chat is going to get you 20% off of your first order. And if you subscribe, you're going to get an additional 10% off plus free shipping. That's backyardbutchers.com slash chat. But I, the internet's <laughs> wild, dude. I mean, the internet is wild. I was... Uh, we do, so we're doing an audio only podcast of this show on Mondays and Wednesdays. We do video on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I, the, the, I, the audios, I try to keep it just 25 minutes and I just hit headlines, give you my take on it. And a week or two ago, I played this clip from 1961. You know how they used to play those infomercials mm -hmm. or those whatever public service announcements yeah, yeah. before a movie or something. And they were like, just corny as can be looking back on them. Like, Mystery Science Theater 3000 used to make fun of these things all the yeah. time. Well, this is a deal from 1961 about Ralph taking Jimmy fishing and developing a friendship between a man and a teenager. And uh, it's like, and, and Ralph has a sickness of the mind. It's an invisible disease, but a disease nonetheless. It's dangerous and contagious. Ralph is a homosexual. <laughs> And there people were going, what happened to Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy got his guts rearranged. What happened to Jimmy? Jimmy got his back broken out, but apparently. It's crazy that, like, even in 1961, people were calling stuff out. I mean, again, contagious and dangerous. I mean, that, okay. But um, <laughs> was Jimmy over 18 or was Jimmy? I don't think Jimmy was because that, that was the whole point was he was like, and he showed Jimmy pornography and Jimmy knew it was wrong, but. You know how boys are. And so he's like, this taking is him, real. Yeah. And he's taking him to a hotel room. <laughs> the, the, the scene ends, he's taking him into a hotel room. Jimmy should have had this conversation with a parent or a teacher. It's like he would pay him f with money and favors. You know, he, but Jimmy <laughs> didn't know he was going to have to pay Ralph back. Yeah. <laughs> mm, Wild. With his mouth. Yeah. Wild. Wow. Man. And so I'll show it to you when yeah, we're done. I, but I played the clip of that thing. And I'm like, 
it, it's funny, like the pendulum starts swinging back and forth about what's okay to talk about, not talk about. I'm one of those guys who just pushes the envelope no matter what. Like I, I had a video that got millions of views on Instagram a couple of weeks ago because I called out the Kansas City shooting, the media on that deal because they wouldn't reveal that the people were black. 100%. And they said it was over age. Well, now they were, they were you know, I got to sneeze, but they said they were 18 and 22. But they were never going to reveal. Look at the light. Oh, there you go. There it is. <laughs> and they were never going to reveal, you know, and that's kind of become a trend in the, in the media. And so you call that stuff out. And I think people... Like are sick of dancing around the narratives. It's they're well, tired of it. It's, it's like it's, come on. It's not even sick of it. It's dangerous. Yeah. Like it's like when there is a when, like I think Michigan State had one uh, the shooter at large and they couldn't say what the shooter at large looked like because he was black. Yeah. This isn't me being a racist. This is called just common sense. It is right. And it's gotten to a point where it's like Kansas City shooting. I you you know that it's gonna dis the story is gonna disappear. Like right. twenty people were shot in it and it, but it was it was BS gang violence. Yeah. And it's like. People are are sending their hopes and prayers and saying, we got to talk about gun laws. These are criminals. I saw a great meme today with a wolf eating a sheep. And it was talking about how the wolf, they, they've come to find out that the wolf did the damage by biting the sheep. So then the sheep decided they needed to get rid of their teeth because the teeth were the bad thing. Oh, Guess wow. what? The wolf still has the teeth. And meanwhile, the sheep are all toothless and they couldn't fight, couldn't fight back anyways. It's yeah. the perfect analogy of what's going on is like wh whether it's gun rights, gun control or actual avoiding any kind of racism, which it's not racism when you're just calling. can't say it. Can you say calling a spade a spade anymore? Or is that racist? I think too? you can. You can. OK. Well, On I this show, you can. OK. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, but that's a perfect example. Yeah. Uh, the uh, last week there was a shooting in Washington, D.C. at the Navy Yard and uh it was a cop that got shot, and yeah. and they were like, "We're not going to release." You know, well, they didn't say that; they just said a suspect at large means they're black. Means they're black, or a you know because again, minority. and and again, people say, "Well, that's racist." No, 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 no. The problem is not that I, I I don't care what the color of your skin is. I mean, if you're a perpetrator, you're a perpetrator. But if we need to find you, let's use some identifying markers. Um, and the media just doesn't want to do that, which is bullshit because now they're protecting a behavior from people because they're like, oh, we don't want to offend certain people. Well, I don't, they shot somebody, offend the shit out of them. Yeah. You know? It's like um, the, the Lake and Riley. Lake and Riley it's, deal. It's, they didn't want to, they didn't want to do that. And, and, and if you saw Alejandro Mallorcas was on, what was it? Face the Nation the other day. And the interviewer, she said, she said, Lake and Riley was murdered. And then she goes, allegedly just like that, by a Venezuelan migrant. And it's like that she stressed the allegedly. Right. I have no problem that you, for media purposes, press purposes, journalistic purposes, have, have to, to use the word allegedly, yeah. but she really stressed it. And I was like, mm, that didn't sit well with me, right. the way she said that. And uh, then the FBI came out with a tweet where they had, they were talking about retail theft operations and they had the stock photo of white girls putting the cans in their overcoats. And one of the comments down there said, no wonder you can't, this doesn't end. You guys have the, you're identifying the wrong people. And, and so people look at that and they're like, uh, oh, you can't, you, how can you say something like that? Well, I know who's doing smash and grabs. I know who's doing the looting. I know who's doing, so let's just, as a society, I don't think we can move forward if we don't, just say, listen, we're all people. Let's stop changing the narrative by melanin at right. this point. I, who, I don't care if you're black. Yeah. I don't care if you're white. No. I don't care. If you did it, let's talk about it. The only reason I uh, I overemphasize, and that's probably why you know, I'm considered a Christian white nationalist sometimes, <laughs> um, I overemphasize because I think we're at a point where cyclically our society changes. Like the 80s, there was the preppies. And then the 90s, yeah. you had the, the funk and the, all this stuff. And they're like, it'll come back. We'll come back to some kind of normalcy. I think we're on the brink of not coming back from that normalcy. And if we don't correct the narrative on what is actual, what is causing these crimes, and yes, white people commit crimes too. Statistically, it is so drastically per capita on more of a minority base or uh illegal alien, but can I say alien either? Illegal uh, the only migrant, thing I, I know, yeah. The only thing um, yeah. So all these different things, it's like, if we don't call out what's there and and force it in the face like they're doing on the 90% of the media that's that's perpetrated by the left, then we don't have a fair conversation with people. It's like when you're watching what's going on on uh, like a Newsweek post or any of these leftist things that are calling out Trump for stuff that doesn't even exist, yeah. the, the comments are what scares me. And if we don't get some sense of normalcy back to like 
there, there's never been objective journalism. I understand that. But 20 years ago, we could be human beings and have a difference in opinion and have a conversation. Yeah, a dialogue. And, and we are past that. If, if Politically, we are so down the line with, you know, we just can't, there's there's only the middle ground that can have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And then otherwise we're yelling across back and forth. And it's yeah. just, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's gotta go away. Uh, for years I've said, founding fathers founded a country that they could dialogue, discuss, disagree, debate, and still come back together and say, okay, what's for the greater good? You and I, you know, Jefferson and Adams may hate each other, figure out a way in their old age to be friends with one another. Uh, but at the end of the day, they still were for what was best for this new country. Right. And you, you take your disagreements, you take your stuff aside, and then you say, listen, there are differences among us. That's what makes America. I love diversity. I love, I've spent 20 years of my life in diverse cultures, in third world cultures. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I love diversity. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I also understand, you know, when I see Joe Biden go to a black church and they're, you know, they're getting after it, they're, and he's going, and then he's going to stand up and say, I was raised in a black church. You know, you don't vote for me. You're not black. And y'all are okay with that? Y'all yeah. are gonna give that a pass? It's it's like, no, Joe, you don't fit, bro. He like, did the fried chicken thing last week. Dude, too. he did the fried chicken <laughs> thing. And I'll give Stephen A. Smith he got, props on that, Stephen which I rarely Smith, do. He confuses me, because sometimes he does some things, Stephen A. Smith, yeah. I mean, I'm like, he's not completely blind. Like, he's not. He sometimes actively chooses to be blind, but he did a good job with the fried chicken. He did chicken. a good job, because yeah. it was like, if Trump had done that, for those of you who don't know, Joe Biden did a little commercial, a little promo thing where he sits down with a black dad and two young teenage boys, the sons, and they're eating fried chicken at the kitchen table. And he's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What are you going to do with your life? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the dad's kind of directing the conversation. If Trump had sat down with, you know, like Pete Buttigieg, you know, looking for hot sauce, eating fried chicken with Al Sharpton, you know, back when the, the primaries were going on. With or without lube. <laughs> I don't want to know where that chicken's been, son. Uh, yeah. I'll take a drum, please. I'll take a, I'll take a drumstick. We're going to Buttigieg this chicken's... Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Trump would have caught hell for that. Oh, it would have been terrible. And a perfect case in point, uh, just a little while ago, before we started talking, I, I ran over to Twitter, because that was the only thing... That, this, this will timestamp this. You'll know when we tape this. This Facebook and Meta... Instagram, everything was down this morning. Apparently, everything in the world was down. Solar flares, folks. Remember, it's solar flares. Um, I went over to Twitter, and last night, about 1230 at night, I, I posted, I said, when they say uh, threat to democracy, what they mean is threat to their agenda. And somebody said, no, we're against, you know, Trump is the threat because he said he is going to do away with the Constitution and be a dictator from day one. That was the interview with Sean Hannity. He did not, that is not what he said. As a joke, he said, oh yeah, the only day I'd be a dictator is day one. You can't have a sense of humor. Yeah, he's not allowed yeah, to. You cannot, you're not allowed to. He said, I would close the border. Right. I, I basically just said, I, day one, I would just make sure that happens. But they're okay with Joe Biden, who's flown 320,000 illegals into the country in the last year, flown them in. Yeah. I mean, so they can lessen the border en encounters and make their numbers look better. Right. The And, you know, the black, going back to the fried chicken thing, the other thing is <laughs> that it's it's still, it's a perception. So Biden, I make you bet that's the only time he sat down with normal black people in a year, two years. Trump will have fried chicken with black people without cameras on. Right. Like, that is actually, that is a re, he, as much as Trump is more of a silver spoon baby, which I've seen now all those ads, like Joe Biden was a working class man. Right. Trump was raised with the silver spoon. Yeah, Trump, just because somebody is wealthy and raised wealthy does not mean they can't be a decent human being. And I just think that that kind of narrative, like the uh, the Fannie Fannie Willis situation in Georgia, that's some of the articles that are coming out today. It's like, this woman blatantly shouldn't be actually have any say in that trial right. in Georgia whatsoever. And meanwhile, people on the bottom of these and the comments, because that's where I like to look, Me they're, too. they're just, they're all they're going is, who cares what she did? We know Trump is guilty of da 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 I'm like, yeah. well, really? Like, is that, is that, is that how you are, you rationalize your whole entire life at this point? Yeah. Meanwhile, again, Biden is, Biden is doing such egregious things. And we're in Texas. So let's talk about this. So you talk, I'm going to pour. Yeah, I don't know if you it. need any of this. You got to work, you no, got to work tonight. I'll I give you a sip. I, I'll get, it, it'll lessen the blow of getting yelled at at the rodeo. His, his girlfriend, Kelly, <laughs> is a barrel racer, a quite successful one. And the Houston rodeo is going on and he's got to be her bitch. That's a fact. She's a hot girl, though. So, listen, if you're going to be somebody's bitch, Kelly's the one. <laughs> Kelly's the one. 
What are we drinking? That it's Woodford. Nice. Whip cheers. Cheers. Kelly trips me out, dude. You never know what's going to come out of her mouth. The funniest thing I ever heard her say, we were all out there that that thing after that event that night. She goes, you know, she goes, I love Anthony. She goes, he's got husband dick. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, girl. So I've been wearing a lot of short shorts. We'll get back into my Texas thing in a second. So I've been, and, and I didn't realize, I didn't quite know where the angle was going to be. So I know Kelly. <laughs> I know Kelly is going to give me trouble mm -hmm. uh, for, for having the little leg showing. Um, it's okay. So, show that leg, baby. So Mom, mom's there. And there's Biscuit. Biscuit, There's Biscuit, Biscuit right there. Biscuit heard me talking about legs. Biscuit's like, I'm coming up. Listen, collegiate moms all over the country are going wild for Anthony Russo's leg. You're welcome. Leg action. Dang, Texas. Welcome. I mean, the, it's the calves. But anyways, yeah. um, so today, because we're at the rodeo, we're at the hospitality area, and it's all, like she did a Snapchat, and it's all guys in jeans, 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 jeans. Right. And I'm wearing like short workout shorts. <laughs> She wanted to post on it. Tell me, tell me your boyfriend's got a small dick without telling me your boyfriend's got a small dick. Oh, babe. Damn what it. was it I was saying about these microphone stands a minute ago? They yeah. frustrate me because they're so short. I said, but if you get it at the right angle. And, you know, for guys like us, we've we've learned that uh, our entire lives, it may be short, but if you get it at the right angle, it's it's all good. So. I'm a good talker. Um, I'm, a, I'm more about the pillow talk. I've uh, all, I can uh, entertain yeah. afterwards to make up for the failure beforehand. That, see, that's a good philosophy <laughs> right there. Uh, I can talk you into anything and then, <laughs> and then you know, um, make you like it. You got this new book out talking about, <laughs> talking about talking and uh, writing and communicating the art of doubling down. That's the new book. Let's put it right there yeah. on that camera. The art of doubling down. I like this book. I like the size of this book. Um, I like the feel of this book. Like this is this is a manageable book. Like some people write a, a thing, you know. The Art of doubling down. Unlock the secret to how failure accelerates your success. I even wrote the That's blurb. You, you on ended the back. up getting on the back cover. You're you're look right at here. that. I'm on you're the. I'm I'm like um, I said. This is what I said, and I write. I wrote it. I don't have people. Yeah. I said, Anthony Russo does a powerful job of walking you through the steps to rising up from your failure and helping you break the victim cycle. Amen. The Art of Doubling Down is a book you will come to highly value on the journey of life. And it is. I, I think this is, I think you did a phenomenal job on that. Um, you, you've had a lot of adversity in your life and you've come through a lot of different things. And um, so, yeah, it's a good book. You know, it's cool. I went to, uh, I went to a speak, I was in the Great American Speak Off. It's a Pete Vargas, Grant Cardone thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's like an American Idol for speaking. And I mean, I brought that with me, and that's kind of my topic that I talk about. I love politics. I, I light up when I talk about politics more than anything else. Yeah, you but like I, it. I like it probably more than even motivational stuff. But um, I talk about failure because my dad was a compulsive gambler. What was interesting is this room. So it was 5,500 people auditioned digitally, and I made the top 135, I believe, and you got to go to Florida, and it was like a free conference. Got to see Grant. I mean, anytime, even though I didn't make the top 30, um, anytime you get to see Grant Cardone in a room of 100 people talk for 45 minutes right. for free, it's worth it. And it's, right. you know, it's kind of cool to see. Um, but what I what I always learn from seeing a whole bunch of like kind of no name speakers that are all really powerful is people's stories are absolutely insane. Yeah. And to to level like what people go through, to level the trauma that people go through and think that my life is difficult. You're like it's such it's such bullshit. Like you look at people that are in wheelchairs or br this one kid, this one guy's got brittle bone disease, br br brittle bro bone disease, and he's out there like rapping and and also having these amazingly powerful positive talks i'm like your life's really not that bad so my my whole like my whole life is uh or my whole book is and concept and speaking is talking about overcoming failure yeah and being willing to fail and realizing there's a whole bunch of mistakes you go through in life politics you go look at the same way if we actually analyze our failures instead of completely sweeping under the under the rug which is democrats and republicans do the same damn thing sure they, they pretend do. like their you know corpses aren't really dead um and that's just the whole philosophy is, is I use my dad's gambling strategy because he was handicapped and a compulsive gambler to look at life, which is you double your bet every time you lose. Actually analyze the failures, don't sulk in them. So yeah. that's what the book's about. Eventually it comes back around. 100%. It comes back around. Hey guys, let's take a quick break in the show and uh, let's talk about my friends over at Patriot Mobile. You know, for 10 years, they have been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. And when I say the only one, trust me, they are the only one. Another thing about them is they've been a partner of this show for a long time, and they're very good personal friends. I love these guys. I know their values, and they're just good people. 
and I'm happy that they partnered with this show. I'm so proud of them. Patriot Mobile has offered uh, dependable nationwide coverage for a long time, but they give you the ability to access all three major networks now, so you do not have to worry about ever getting out from under a coverage area. You've grown accustomed to having it, so you might as well keep it. But here's the deal. With Patriot Mobile, you don't have to fund the left or their causes because with the big three, if you pay your bill with them, guess what? They're going to fund things that you don't believe in. It's a fact. It's true. Check it out. Do your research. So when you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message that you support with your hard-earned dollars. You support free speech, the Second Amendment, religious freedom, the sanctity of life. You're going to honor military veterans and um, our first responder heroes. They got a 100% US-based customer service team that's gonna make switching easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade. They'll help you, switching is easy, and their team will even help you find the best plan that fits you and your family's needs. You can go to uh, patriotmobile.com, that's patriotmobile.com. Don't forget to add slash Chad on the end of it. Or you can call them on the phone, 972-PATRIOT. You get free activation with promo code C-H-A-D, I spell it Chad. Join me, make the switch today, patriotmobile.com slash chat. That's patriotmobile.com slash chat or call them, 972-PATRIOT. Um, talking about failures. So um, hmm. the, the Biden administration, I don't know. Such an easy target at this point. Um, every one of the major categories that are issues on voters' minds, he's at like a 65 to 68% uh, disapproval rate mm -hmm. on that. Uh, <clears throat> absolute dismal failure. I'm asking everybody, do you think he'll be on the ballot in no. November? No, I've said that for a while. It's I think it's going to be Gavin Newsom. Um, <coughs> here's the thing, and and this is what I, and I'll cir circle back to both of the topics because I was talking about Texas before. <sighs> this is not going to be, it's not going to be a fair election no matter how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, I think it's very important that everybody goes and votes because I think if it, it if it's a mass victory, yeah. we're good. Um, and I and I've told you this before. I was never like the ultra. I'm not ultra MAGA. I'm MAGA, but I'm not ultra MAGA. Mm -hmm. um, but he's the best option we've got clearly on our side. And when you look at what's happening in Texas, everybody's everybody's looking at swing states, whether it's Biden or whether it's uh, uh, Gavin Newsom or Michael Michelle, whatever, um, whoever it is. The big the big thing is going to come down to Texas, not the swing states. The swing states are looking good for Republicans. Texas is has 100% become a red, uh, continued to be a red state. They were yeah. saying it's going to be purple. It's going to be purple. It's not. It's it's red. However, we've got all these illegal immigrants that are heavily focused in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And everybody's sleeping on Texas. And I know a lot of Texas voters that are like, oh, my vote doesn't matter. Screw it. I'm not even going in. We, yeah, we lost the last election because they cheated. So there's going to be some disenfranchised voters that won't show up. Right. And then we've got, a, if 20% if of the 3 million in Texas alone find a way to, to vote, all of a sudden that swings Texas. And all of those swing states mean nothing because Texas turns blue. Yeah, That's my fear. Yeah, that is a fear. And if you look at uh, Fort Worth has always, you know, where you live in that area, uh, Fort Worth, and I am from that area for a long time, um, it, it, it teeters on mm -hmm. the fence of, of, of being blue. Dallas is blue. Uh, Austin is certainly blue. San Antonio, El Paso, Houston, all blue. But we have, I don't know, what, 10 or a dozen cities uh, of populations of over 100,000 mm -hmm. that are considered our small towns, but they're not that small. They're pretty large. Those kind of hold the line in terms of keeping Texas red. So you have to keep holding out hope that that's going to happen. Um, there's also those people out there who aren't going to vote for Trump because of the elevation that he gave Anthony Fauci or the warp speed or promoting the the vaccine. They're just, that's absolutely unforgivable. I mean, I've been, people get pissed at me because I'm like, he's not going to apologize. No, I want him to apologize. But he's not going to. He's just not going to. And I've said over, I've said before, I'm like, you're gonna have to get over that. He might when he's president. Yeah, and people, people are like, well, you just, we're not gonna get over it. I mean, listen, um, people that want to come after me, I ran for two years for governor on the platform. I was pr pushed to run on the basis of of shutdowns yeah. of what happened with the um, with COVID. So trust me, it's a very dear issue to me. I mean, I lived in that meat grinder for 19 months. You mean the flu, by the way? Because last week it. It's it treated changed. like the flu. It's tra it's treated treat it like, like the flu. The flu. Yeah. And I've said it's the flu. And people are like, it's not the flu. I understand that. But if you're treating it like the flu. It's the flu. It's the flu. If it sneezes like a duck. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. 
Um, but there are people out there who, uh, you know, they're either stayed on the DeSantis train or they're like, well, Trump's so immoral. Uh, immoral compared to the Biden uh, regime that, you know, they can't identify what a man or a woman is and they're willing to lop off the genitals of children and they're going to expose them to pornography. They're going to bring illegals into this country literally by the millions and do absolutely nothing about it. They're going to call those people newcomers and you're an ultra mega extremist an insurrectionist, a domestic terrorist, and those people coming here are newcomers? Yeah, I, I don't, like, your options are, I, I would say that uh, the choice is kind of made for me in yeah. regards to that. So we'll see. Now, I think that you're right. If there's an overwhelming turnout for the election, that's one thing. Um, I think they believe the fix is in no matter what. But they also believe that in 2016 with Hillary. True. And they didn't have the algorithm turned up high enough right. on that deal. And uh, either that or they just really didn't like that bitch. Because I have never met anybody who's been around her who had anything good to say about Hillary. Right. Maybe they just really did want her to lose. Can't even, can't even look at her in the eye, I've heard, if you're just a regular person. Like yeah. the people that worked in the White House can't yeah. look at her in the eye. She's horrendous. Allegedly. Our, our buddy uh, <laughs> Buzz Buzz Patterson, who was on the show a week ago, he carried the nuclear football for Clinton for two years, lived in the Clinton White House. And he said, you know, Bill, he said, didn't have a moral fiber in his body, but he was a pretty good guy. Like, you could hang with him. Like, yeah. he was a good dude. He said, Hillary, you couldn't be in her presence. No. He said the nuclear knockdown drag outs that they had <coughs> maritally when they would get really? into a fight, he said, it, 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 you could hear it all over the freaking White House. So there's a reason he got a blowjob. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. Monica's the one we know about. Yeah. 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 I mean, the dude went to Epstein Island 38 times he wasn't down there to jet ski at least monica was of age yeah yeah that's the positive well i make jokes on stage i say bill went to epstein island so many times he saw those girls come of age <laughs> you know he was there to watch them grow up yeah. they threw an 18th birthday party for some of those girls uh um, so who do you think who do you think is going to run on the democrat side well michelle's came out and said she's not going to i don't believe that uh michelle would be a, a, a sure victory for them nobody's running i should i said run Sorry, they're gonna be who's gonna placed. be installed they're gonna yeah. be placed because they'll they'll get to the a lot of people that I've talked to said they're going to get we're going to get past the Super Tuesday, which but now that this has come out, we're actually taping this on Super Tuesday. A lot of people that I respect their opinion said we're going to get past Super Tuesday and then they'll then they'll replace somebody. We're playing footsie. I we just one. did. <laughs> it's the um, dog, it wasn't me. The um, <laughs> if you feel my leg running up or my foot <laughs> running up your leg and those little bare those bare legs, you'll know what's up. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I think they're going to the DNC. I think he'll be the candidate, and then they'll use their DNC rules that within three weeks they can place whatever exactly. candidate they want. It'll either be Newsom or Obama, and they, it could be both of them. Uh, Gavin's a communist. He's 10 times worse than anything we got right now. Uh, Michelle could, at least can be controlled. Uh, Barack was controlled. The, the, the ideology is still not good for the country. I, I keep saying if it's Michelle, it's at least the evil you know, because we know this evil. Yeah. Uh, Gavin Newsom... He's going to try to run things. He's next level. Yeah, he's 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 a protege of Xi Jinping. Do so. you do you uh, do you think the Republicans are making a mistake by not campaigning against them right now? Well, again, <clears throat> you start to understand why Nikki Haley was in the thing for so long because she was a distraction from that and kept them from that. Uh, all the stuff that you see, whether it's the Ronald McDaniel with the RNC, uh, the Nikki Haley staying in the thing, this was all one big distraction that kept them from being able to focus on the left. Yeah. They better learn some some good talking points. They better learn how to communicate some things because there's a lot at stake here. And they're not campaigning for the presidency right now. They're still trying to get the primary. Right. And, of course, again, by the time this airs, that may all be different. You would so, hope that she'd given up by then. But yeah. I just – I think it's a big <clears> – <throat> it's a calculated mistake because I think we I – I mean, there's no way that Biden continues – onto the election like he is as close Absolutely to dead impossible. like i i just don't see it if there's there there's no way to avoid it there's no way for him to win no matter how hard they push the algorithm like you were mentioning like there's just no way the the key is the later they wait it's kind of like you know using your nas and fast and the furious like yeah. the later they wait the harder it is for the republicans to counter mm. so it's like if if gavin newsom if we have five, six months to talk about how terrible Gavin Newsom is, what he's done to California, what his family ties are, what he did during COVID, how he treated the people from his own state, all these things, great. But if you do it six weeks before an election, there's already people that are past the point of listening. It's going to be harder because you know it's not going to be on but 10% of the media and social media, and people are going to be like, I'm not listening. So all of a sudden, you're going to have a guy with a clean slate come in 
anybody that was an anti-Trumper but wasn't motivated to vote because they didn't like their own guy will go, well, this guy's a good speaker. He's polished. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they'll see. They'll be like, he's a polished guy. He's, you know, this is my anti-Trump and it's going to activate the vote. And if we don't, if we're not countering it now, people have no idea how bad Gavin Newsom is. And I've been saying that for months now. I'm like, we need to start campaigning against Gavin Newsom. Yeah. I think people know Michelle Obama a little bit uh, enough. So I, I just think I think it's a huge mistake that we're thinking that we're still campaigning against Biden and that's that's what's going on. They're kind of laughing at Biden and I do too. I think we all laugh at what Biden does and how he yeah. talks and what he says. Yeah. But the Democrats are relying on that in my belief system right now. Hey guys, I'll take a quick break and let me tell you about something that may change your life. There's a silent epidemic that's going around. That's right. It is affecting over 100 million Americans. It is called a fatty liver. If you're feeling sluggish, if you're gaining weight, Oh, man, your liver is tired. You've thrown everything you can at your poor liver, everything from cholesterol, alcohol, toxins, heavy metals, statins, cigarettes, and your liver is doing its best to work for you. Uh, why don't you help it out, okay? You got that sluggish, fatty liver, and it's, yeah, you don't have any energy. You're feeling fat. All of that stuff's going on in your life. It's important to protect your liver, and you need to start today. You can do that with our friends over at Liver Health Formula. Let me tell you something. They have an all-natural supplement which contains 11 clinically proven botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. The company's already helped more than 2 million customers, fellow Americans like you with that fatty liver. And they've used that product. And, and let me tell you something. My, my own brother and I have had amazing results off of it. My brother's doctor said, yes, absolutely, take this stuff. It's good for you because he was having issues. So I want you to join us. And uh, right now, when you order, you will get five free gifts. That's right, five, five free gifts uh, from them when you order uh, your, your liver health formula. So that's pretty cool. So I want you to go to getliverhelp.com, getliverhelp.com slash Chad. Claim your free bonus gifts with your order today. That's get liverhelp.com slash Chad. Yeah, they want it. They want to make him look like the buffoon and then yeah. they trot somebody in there who, you know, Ga Gavin is slick. He's got the big smile. He can talk. And, and he did, I mean, he to me, he won the he won the debate against DeSantis because he somehow managed to never have to answer some of the hard questions. He slithered out of it. Like DeSantis won based on the fact that California sucks compared to Florida. Yeah, on the numbers game, he lost. DeSantis won yeah. that deal. But yeah, on the on the way he avoided things. He's good. Yeah. He's really good. Slippery. Slippery as hell. Slippery. That's a pro that, to me that's a problem. That's a huge problem. Yeah. Because he's they're going to see they're going to see that version of him without the other stuff. Well, and people are so blind to stuff. You know, the other day somebody said to me that California's doing great. We can deal with our migrants. They're here. They're working. And I'm like, no, nah, San Diego County is broke. They've run out of their money, and now they're doing mass releases from the buses right in the middle of the street. Yeah. We we showed that on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the guy said, We're, it's not broke at all. It's working perfectly. And I was like, dude, here's here's nine articles that say exact same thing yeah. this week. And they're, they're, they're blind to that. It's a horrible deal. I posted the thing about Biden flying the people into the country, and somebody said, that's a lie. <laughs> Study up, bitch. I mean, it's it ain't a lie. You go to an airport right now, too. And I mean, yeah. again, again, these might people might be people that are already in the country that have already, but they're those yellow folders. I made the joke on my because my personal page, I try to not get overly political. And and I posted, I I did it as a question. Like, what are yeah. all these yellow folders and people without luggage going through? I saw through that the, post, yeah. I know what they are, but it was interesting. Like people are all, con they know what they are and they're everywhere. Like mm -hmm. every, I mean, San Antonio is the worst. I think San Antonio and Colorado oddly had enough, but I have an interesting story when I was working state college uh, in Penn state, I went to go try to rush to the airport after the event. Cause I was trying to make it back for a conference uh, that I didn't think I'd make it back for. So I was trying to get an earlier flight. I didn't hit the standby cause there was 15 seats available. I'm like, all right. And this is Pennsylvania yeah. to Texas. And uh, it's it's very odd to me. It shows that they're just kind of transporting them everywhere. Yeah. And uh, I get to the airport and I managed to check in, get in, and I've, I've made it. So I, I got there with 25 minutes to spare. <clears throat> it's such a small airport. They're going to let me in. And they're like, all the tickets are sold out. And I was like, how is that? I'm like, they were available three hours ago. They're like, this guy, he, he and I look, and it's 15 people with plastic bags and these yellow folders, mm -hmm. which that was the first time I had really seen them last year. And uh, they, he goes, yeah, he comes in and he he buys full fare 
full fare. So last minute flight out no of shit. State College, Pennsylvania. So you're talking thousand dollar tickets. So he spent probably fifteen thousand on flights, booked everything out. Looks for the more open flights. It's college. It's a game. It's a game day. So wow. nobody's flying. Fifteen people, and he transports them for work. Now, how much money? Let's let's look at the privilege on that one. How much money is the transporter making compared to the people that are probably making six dollars an hour? Right. But no, let's just let it. Let's let's the, let's let the actual human atrocities just keep happening, and also like not pay attention to it. That's whatsoever. insane. Dude. Yeah, I couldn't believe. And they go, and I, they're like, "This happens pretty." Like, well, you nonsense. know, it's happening, but to see it, to see it go from the north to the south too, it shows that they just bounce them all over the country. They're they're literally getting, they're getting human like they're not being sexually trafficked, but they're being human trafficked for low wage work with mm. wealthy people from different parts of the country to just ship in places to Will work. you look at uh, the Ibarra <clears throat> guy, the kid that killed the Lake and Riley, killed Lake and Riley uh, in Georgia. Allegedly. Allegedly. In Georgia. He went from New York to Georgia. That's north-south, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, he he's got apprehended at the southern border. They let him go. Again, one of those notice to appears two years out. He goes to New York. And that's another thing she said on Face the Nation, said he got arrested for driving a scooter with no license. No, he assaulted a kid and got arrested yeah. for driving without a license. A scooter. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hate these journal <laughs> media people. It, it just, oh, he, he's poor little innocent. You know, he was just riding his little scooter and the police were messing with him. He just didn't have a license. She. And then he goes to Georgia and murders this girl. And then they come out allegedly. and say, if, <laughs> if allegedly... They come out and said, you know, that that they now authorities now believe that Lake and Riley resisted. I saw that one too. And therefore it caused him to panic and ultimately murder her. Um, yeah. Haven't they been to the feminist training course? That's called victim shaming right there. <laughs> you're literally you're <laughs> Wow. That, I saw that article too. I'm like, this has to be a joke. And it was a major publication, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. And they were legit going, the reason it escalated is because so so what are you teaching young women? And I know you said to Sarah, like you can't go on your don't go anywhere by yourself. And what are you yeah. teaching? Don't fight back, just let it happen. Right. I mean, we're letting immigrants in, and you know, this they deserve they deserve a fair shake at being with your vagina. What what the yeah seriously yeah just let it go just let it happen that's like that's that's similar to um somebody can answer me in the comments uh who would you may know who people was the watching guy us. they watched this they show oh, there's okay. 17 18 people depending <laughs> on the algorithm they get a notification out of 368,000 subscribers yeah it's insane uh who was the guy who was running for governor um where was that where he said you know, the best thing you can do if you're in a situation where you're being raped is just try to enjoy it. There was a... That's the... Well, that's Carol Jean King, to, or whatever her name is. Uh, E.G. E. E. G. Carol. Or whatever, E.G. Carol. Um, I'm going to Google that right now. Let's see. Governor... Let's see. Governor, candidate, rape, just enjoy it. You're going to get some weird, weird responses that, on that uh, one. That was, that was, that was Texas. I wanna, was it Texas. That was Texas. That I remembered. Oh, and it's New York Times, of course, is going to make me try to pay. Clayton Williams. Clayton Williams, when he ran for governor uh, in 1990, he made the offhand remark uh, and said, um, he said, if it's inevitable, just relax and enjoy it. Too many crickets. That's bad. That was yeah. in 1990. I, was he running as a Republican, I assume? Yeah, he was running against Ann Richards. So, yeah, and that's... Um, uh, yeah, that was that. That's that screams 1990. That's I think that's that's the image of a Republican that people still hold in their mind. They right. think, oh, that's that asshole old white guy that uh, that is going to keep talking about letting yeah. you know. That's I mean that's a perfect example of why why the Republican is has a bad name. But parties shift. The right. parties have completely shifted at this yeah. point. They they really. That's the truth. <clears throat> I I mean you and I when we met, I called myself a constitutional liberal. I still have a lot of liberal beliefs. And well, I said that about you whenever, whenever we met, and as we were getting to know each other a little bit, I was like, you know, you 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 are a fair-minded guy. Like you don't really go either way. You just kind of look at it commonsensically, and I liked that about you. Because I'm on, no matter what I say, I'm automatically labeled extreme right wing. But then again, you're one of those. And correct me if I'm wrong here. You may be able to correct this a little bit. Um, it's sort of like the left ran so far. So far off the edge that it's like they kind of leave you out there and you're like, damn, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. And I think the ideology has always been that way. Like I, I started to look back at my early 2000s. I went to art school. Like 
I mean, of course you did. And, uh, look yeah. at the legs on this guy. <laughs> I mean, look, look at the that, that's, that's got those art are, school. Those are art school that's legs, bad. you know. Wow. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, in, in all reality, it's like I I I had the ideology then that everybody that was Republican, not just the politicians, but the actual peers, I already had a negative uh, right. connotation towards them, which isn't fair. And I realized that that's held and it just got more and more increased. But yeah, I and, and what makes it even funnier is the fact that as somebody that is pretty middle ground, I was I could still manage to get canceled. Like I was having a conversation with some of my really close friends. And I have a friend that is probably one of the funniest people I know. Uh, I used to have a friend. And, and he, him and I... Uh, by going to January 6th, I had my three closest guy friends. Like, we were the ones who would do steak dinners in Chicago every time we'd work and we'd do all this stuff. I haven't spoken to any of them outside of one time at work with one of them. Besides that, off the text chain, off everything, off the group poker, off all of it, gone. And it was literally all because of an ideology. And, and you you were at January 6th, which basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase this, you basically were on a date. I was on, it was it was Kelly and I's first date. 100%. I mean, y'all y'all went to DC. Yeah, yeah. And now and we we went to DC and and uh, we've talked about Cash before. Cash finally just got out of out of jail or pri federal prison right now. He got out a couple weeks ago, or a couple months ago. I don't know where we are right now. Um, but it's like it, it, it's just all these weird narratives that are painted against regular Americans that have caused me to start becoming more and more conservative over time. I'm a two time Obama voter, which was horrific looking back. Granted. Was Romney any better? No. No. I mean, I, honestly, I think Romney was actually, if you look from an establishment, because I don't know what we know now. I don't think worse. it's, right. I don't think it's Republican yeah. and Democrat. I think it's establishment and new wave. And that's why I kind of, that's why I've started to re really like Trump again is because I'm like, the only way that we could break this two party system is with people like an RFK and with Trump to say, we need a whole new party. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that could that could be a whole other hour long discussion about whether or not Romney was worse than Obama. I mean, listen, Obama came along with a lot of common sense on mm -hmm. some things. Um, and so did Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton, you could use Bill Clinton's State of the Union, and a lot of people are right now. His old State of the Union address where he talks about uh, deporting illegal aliens, and like you know, even Donald Trump Jr. reposted that speech where he said, "I'm Donald Trump Jr. and I approve this message." Yeah, and it was Bill Clinton. Uh, Romney, we just didn't know what. We didn't know. We right. didn't know a lot of things about John McCain. We didn't know a lot of things about the Bushes. We didn't know a lot of, um, you know, God knows. We didn't know anything about Romney. Well, they're all, it's all garbage. It, it's all garbage. And now we've all just kind of awakened to the fact that there's a uniparty that exists. And it, they're all trash. And that's why voting, that's why I think people are disenfranchised from voting. Because you look at people like the Mitch McConnells of the world and uh, uh, Schumer's and all these people that are incredibly unpopular. What's the guy that wears the bandana? I just saw him talking. What's the one? Um, Fetterman? No, Who's, no. Who wears the bandana? No, the now he's not wearing it anymore. The multicolored one. The I mean, ultra left guy, I think from oh, New York. Oh, um, oh, 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 oh. Come oh. on, photographic memory. Oh, come on. <sighs> I was reading an article. He's because now he's speaking out about the fact that we're going to keep trying to make sure Trump isn't on the ballot. Yeah. Larry? Is it Larry? No. Okay. Let me, Sorry, let me, I suck at that. Okay. See, this is why I take name. notes. Pressure, pressure. <laughs> but no, like there's so many things that we uh that we didn't know that we know now that we've opened our eyes to and and you know, we've kind of entered the matrix at this or we've exited the matrix, so to speak. And you know, you're trying to make heads or tails out of this thing. And the other thing that people are disenfranchised and disgruntled about is the fact that people who do mean well and want to be a grassroots candidate, they can't compete against yeah. a guy like Mitch McConnell who's That's literally right. having strokes right. on TV. Fortunately, he's retiring in four, three yeah. years. He's making uh, that announcement. Good, good. Uh, so, th that, that's, so that's what I was getting at. While you're looking at that, it's... It's there's these people don't get votes like nobody wants to vote for these people. So it's like, how is it that over and over Maxine Waters, Sh uh, Schumer, how are they continuing to win? And that shows Jamie Raskin, Jamie Raskin. Jamie thank Raskin. you. Raskin. Jamie yeah, Raskin. Raskin. And he he was talking, he goes, I know the Supreme Court ruled. I know, but we're going to keep trying. That should be your that should be your evidence that it's unconstitutional. All the liberal judges said you can't take him off the ballot. He he doesn't even it's not that he wasn't convicted of insurrection. They even dropped the charges of insurrection. They are yeah. literally making crap up at this yeah. point. And somebody said that to me yesterday on social media. Said, well, you know, you guys are for an autocracy and you you want a um 
you know, you want a guy who is is a convicted criminal and an insurrectionist. So I'm like, convicted criminal? Wrong. Wrong. Where? Wrong. Show me. Yeah. Show me where he was charged with insurrection. Show me where he's been convicted of anything. They said it once on the news because that was an original charge that Fanny, Fanny put out there. And then it was rejected because there's no way to charge him you can't for charge insurrection. Him. But it's already in the brains of the- And it gave him a talking corner. point. It gave him a talking gave point. Gave him a talking point. It's just like- on the right, people keep saying, we always say, yeah, Merrick Garland said that parents are, are domestic terrorists. It's not actually what was said. Um, if you go back and we'll study the context of what was said, he didn't come out and say people at the PTA are domestic terrorists. He, and I'll let you guys go back and do the research on that. I don't want to steal your talking point, but that's not actually what he said. Right. Trust me, I've used it too, because it sounds fucking good. Mm -hmm. Sounds really good. But we do that. We do that. We hear something like, that's a good talking point. Let's right. use it. And so we get away from that stuff. And and now you have folks out there who, you know, whether it's Joe Rogan or Bill Maher or XYZ liberal Dave Rubin, who has been, you know, who used to write for Vice for crying out loud, their party ran off and left them. Yeah. They ran off and left them. And now, you know, there's no common sense left anymore. And it's just, we've got to vilify somebody. What I try to convince people of when it comes to Trump and yeah, it's unforgivable what Trump did with warp speed and pushing the vaccine and elevating Fauci the way he did. I, I mean, I don't like that. But what I try to remind people is, first of all, Trump is the guy now because nobody else could take what's being thrown in the direction of the right except Hundreds, for Trump. And financially, financially and, and able to fight verbally, the legal yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's water off a duck's back with him. Uh, I can't say he doesn't feel the pressure. Of course he does. He's still human. But financially, to be able to deal with the, the lawfare, uh, the uh, the fact that he's not a strong conservative. I mean, he's been a Democrat his whole life. He's yeah. not a he's not a conservative. Uh, I don't like his position that he came out with on, on the abortion thing in that interview. And you know, here's a guy who, um, the left. I'll say it this way. People, nothing unifies people more than having a common enemy. Yeah. Right? 9-11, they flew into the towers, and we were like, we were yeah. all together on that deal. We had they a common enemy. axed down Building 7, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we had a common enemy. Yeah. Um, and so it unified us for a day or two. And that's what's happened with the left. They know that. They know that if they can vilify Donald Trump to that point, a guy who was in their world, they knew him. He was part of them. I mean, he was friends with the Clintons, friends with all of these different people. And they know him. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, no, we got to make this guy evil. He's got to be the embodiment of evil. Yeah. And that's what they did. Yeah. And they used the word, the, the tag words, you know, fraud. Yeah. Who did fraud? What was the fraud? It was fraud. In New York, it was fraud. So who did, who was the victim? <laughs> it's, there's, it's fraud. Yeah. It's fraud. Or, or 2,000 mules. It was debunked. Cool. Uh, so how was it debunked? Uh, I just told you. It was debunked. We told you. <laughs> you can't just make up words or, or you, you know, can't just uh, use words and think or they want to tell you they want to tell you that his uh, estimation of mar-a-lago you know is only worth 18 million dollars <laughs> i'll buy it today i, I will it, find a way to get I, investors I, let me tell you something i will go if if if, if you could buy mar-a-lago which by the way i will be at mar-a-lago uh april 3rd i'm doing comedy nice. in mar-a-lago carry along with roseanne and um uh carrie lake invited it invite me to, oh, that's to awesome. her event. So I'm, Trump will probably be there. We'll see. See if we can make him laugh. I don't know. I, that's, I'm not good at impersonations. I wish I could do a good Trump. I can't do it. I've watched Shane Gillis uh, coach how to do it. Yeah. And he got to come from the back. Yeah. I just, it's not my thing. I uh, I got to really get into it to, to do it. But I, uh, I, uh, you know, if Mar-a-Lago was worth only $18 million. <laughs> Buy it while you're there. Put it some, in office. Somebody would have snapped that oh, yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Somebody would have snapped that up. So you're telling me that Hunter Biden can sell a painting for half a million. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you, Hunter could sell 36 paintings and buy Mar-a-Lago mm -hmm. of his little bubble blowing paint stuff. Yeah. Give me a break. It's, and you're going to say he's committing fraud by doing that. Or, you know, Trump properties, the overestimation of that stuff. Again, there's no victim. To it, but it doesn't hurt the narrative for them to say it's that. Just like January, it's all narrative based, and they're really good at it. And then on top of it, and at one point, if we have time, I want to talk about because you, you mentioned the abortion topic on Trump, and I think it's a smart thing. But 
Yeah, we'll just talk about that. Politically smart. Politically smart. Yeah. And and this is the conversation that I have. And I think one of the first talks we had was kind of our, our belief system on pro-choice, pro-life. And, and there is no way to look at Roe versus Wade and to not think that was bad law and it's it needed to be overturned. If you are a pro-choice constitution supporter, no matter how pro-choice you are, that was bad law. Right. Uh, so it's the way it should be done. I also, at the same token, I'm still, I've become more and more pro-life as as time's gone on as time has gone on in the last couple of years but i do think from a voting perspective because everybody level you everybody has their different levels of what's the most important voting topic and to me that i struggle with because i think that the hardline pro-life situation that happens in primaries mm -hmm. we're like there is no there is no this i'm like you've lost the 10 percent in the middle and i think from a daily livability standpoint from an economy standpoint from a making sure america stays america standpoint it's more important to actually try to win the independent vote and to just not say that not lie and say you're pro-choice but to to give people the right to vote and i think kansas is a perfect example of what you see happen i don't love the idea of an old white dude like abbott getting to make a decision in, in other states in the south too is saying this is my belief system i was voted in i get to make the decision i think it should be i think it should be a ballot item kansas is a very red state and it voted 56 44 i think is what it was or right around those um in favor of being pro-choice mm -hmm. and i think finding a open slightly open-minded cutoff and coming to a, a a middle ground is and making it a ballot item is the best way to at least make it a conversation for both sides and at the end of the day it's a religious belief that we have that i have that makes it wrong mm -hmm. Our country still has freedom of religion, whether we think that's wrong or not. Scientifically, there is people that will fight all the way from conception is when life begins to when the baby comes out, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. But there is, it's a yeah. gray area. So if it's a religious discussion, I have trouble forcing it based on the decision of one governor. That's why I think it should be a ballot item with obvious restrictions based on somewhat common sense. Yeah. And I think Trump did that. Trump had that conversation well to where he can't, that can't, that's not another thing that could be used against him. Yeah, and, and I, politically it was smart. I agree with that. And do I like it? No, but at the same time, I'd, to be fair, I, and I'm on record saying this, um, these are the sound bites that people try to use against me. I don't think you can legislate morality. So you, you, you know, pass this edict from on high that says, okay, abortion is illegal and you automatically save all these lives. And, and so on. what I would rather do is live in a world where we have a value system where people see abortion, whether it's a right or not, they right. see it as wrong. Right. And, and they go, yeah, I'm going to choose life in, in this instance. And people say, well, what about the schools? We got to get all this crap out of the schools. I, I think you got to get your kids out of the schools. Yeah. I mean, if this, if, if this, we turn the schools, <laughs> this is something I've caught a bunch of shit about over the years. Listen, the schools belong to the state. The state's going to run it the way they want to run it. And you can say, well, if my kid's in there, then I'm going to go in there. I'm the parent. Well, if you're the parent, then you educate your kid. I can make that argument. The state's going to run it. If the state says your kid's got to get vaccinated to go to school, you're probably going to have to get vaccinated for the kid to go to school. Well, I can file an exemption. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to do that. Shouldn't. I, don't, I shouldn't have to ask the state's permission on how I treat my kid medically. Right. I've caught a lot of shit over that over the years by saying things like that. Uh, you say, well, they're need to pull the pornography out of the schools. No, you need to pull your kids out of the schools. Because the teachers' unions, the people who develop the curriculum, the people who are writing the books, all of that, they're, they're going to bombard your kids with brainwashing. Yeah. And, and the poor teachers out there teaching this stuff, they're getting bombarded with it too. So, you know, I, I don't think you can legislate morality. I wish we lived in a society where- And it's not getting any better. No. Morality is never going to get any worse. And the teach like that that group is the the lifelong school group. The ones that's like, I went to college for 10 years to be a substitute teacher. These are the people that have been indoctrinated past the point of all return. I used to make fun of homeschooling. And now I'm like, I don't know if there's another way. The only reason to go to public school is if you're an athlete. In all reality, in my opinion, and then now there's ways of still playing summer sports. There's and, ways of still doing there's it. Ways, but it's harder. But at the same time, it's like, we have got, I mean- the, the educators are, they used to be heroes. Like, oh, the teacher, we hold them up on high. They are, not by and large, but as a percentage, the the most indoctrinating, sickest, twistedest group in yeah. terms of morality, unfortunately. I heard somebody, I'm trying to remember who it was, he was a pro athlete, he was a pro football player, and he said his son was like a teenager. He said, no, we homeschooled. He said, and I haven't let him play organized football. He said, but he'll go to college and play football. He said, I've trained him. 
He'll be good him. to go. He'll he said, do the he said, I taught him how to do it. He said, when he, when it's time to try out, he'll, yeah. he'll make the team. Probably way better on the brain. He'll play football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting concept. Yeah. Interesting concept. Which again, you know, we put a huge emphasis on sports almost to the point of deifying it, right? Of, of saying, oh, this is, my kids got to be involved in all this kind of stuff. But your kids aren't, the kid's not going to be involved in anything if society falls. Right. And, you know, you, your kid, your kid, is going to be labeled uh, if he's got any alpha traits at all. He's going to be toxic. He's going to be hated by society. God forbid his skin is white. It's weird. You're going to automatically be public enemy number one. Right. And and so they're going to try to question his gender. They're going to me to him. He's going to be accused of sexual harassment. If he kisses a girl in a parking lot, uh, like, he's abusing Good her. luck. Yeah. It's bad. I mean, God forbid this kid's got testosterone in his I, balls. I just saw a video of a, a mom with her two and a half year old, three year old that just came out as non binary on TikTok. I saw another one where this lady's got four kids and all of them, four effing kids, and all four of them, apparently, according to mom, it's a mental they're, illness. They're, they're the parent. Yeah, it's Munchausen syndrome by proxy. But the, the problem is one of our biggest talking points always is it's parental rights. So if the parent wants to screw up their kid, great. And now it's being celebrated. Like we, we'll talk about so truth. brave. Yeah. We'll talk about truth. We'll talk about politics. And yeah. We'll get a lot of views, but we're not going to get any growth in our social media. It's very difficult. Whereas if I came out tomorrow and said, my, cat decided to be non-binary i'd have a million and some of it would be haters <laughs> and some of it would be like how brave of that pussy cat to finally come out be like oh my god I the just... irony of dressing a wiener dog like a vagina at a me, me too rally <laughs> is it a little pink cat or uh, or you know giving a mohawk to your pussy cat uh it's wow there's a it's lot a going on world. a lot to unpack there Talking about social media, you know they've said meta has said facebook and instagram has said they're not going to promote anything that is a political post. I don't think they're enforcing that. Not at all. Yeah. Since that since that had been made, and I, I mean, I don't have your following. I've got 30,000 maybe on my Instagram. Since that was made, I was like, let's see what happens. I'm gonna, you know, do some political posts and see more traction, like on average, like I'll, I'll have the random post that gets a thousand views. And then I'll have the random post that'll get, you know, a hundred thousand or 200,000. Yeah. I've had more six figure views mm. since they've said that by percentage per capita than I had before that all put together. At Anthony Michael Russo. That's, Love that's, that's the personal. That's the personal. That's what, I keep that motivation. At Truth will set you free. Truth yes. will set you free. Yeah. There's both of them. Do you think I, I do that too though? I mean, like I try to keep one of my Facebook pages a little more. Do you think they were just trying to keep like because they know that that'll look bad? Do you think because they want they want to be they can't they can't they can't quell their liberal outrage on social media. That's how they win elections. That's how they try to win elections. Yeah. So they can't actually enforce it unless it's completely one sided. So all they can do is scare people to the side like us that are already like once bitten twice shy. Like they already hate us. We're we're screwed. And maybe they'll get to shut some people up along the way. Yeah. Well, I can tell, tell you this. People said to me, hey, Shatter, do me a favor. We're going to let people behind the fourth wall here. Walk past there and go hit that thermostat and bump that thing down. It's right down the stairs. Bump that thing down about 64. I'm Are warm. You, see, I... You're wearing shorts. That's why I, I, I aired it out a little bit. You're wearing, wearing shorts. I got a so little I got, breeze. I got, my, I got my little War Hippies uh, band. You dropping weight? No, I gained. To, oh, no, I'm saying, are you dropping weight right now by sweating it out? I am it out. sweating it out. No, yeah, yeah I gained weight. Good no, line, I can tell you gained weight. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> asshole. <laughs> God, no, I, I did, dude. I was doing so good until you were looking. Oh, I, I mean, was. Buff. You're also you're also really good at the angles. No, no, I was buff. I was legit buff mm -hmm. I, until December, uh, in mid November. I hurt yeah. my back. Oh, and, really? And I was like, I can't. I couldn't go to the gym. Couldn't do anything. I'd lost a lot of weight. I lost thirty pounds. And, yeah, you look um, slim. So yeah, I was. I'd, I'd leaned up pretty good, but I gained fifteen of it back. So here we are. I'm kind of in the same. I, I did. I do. I had like. I mean, forty one. What I do with big noon kickoff. That's six hours, and it is it, as much as it is fun. It is the hardest gig, well, and, and I don't think anybody. And I hate to be like nobody else could do what I do. It's not just the running in circles. It's not just like essentially stand up comedy for three hours with a bunch of college kids. It's also I have the headset, in my, and so we had like Little Wayne this year. We had, I mean, we had some really big people. Yeah. So I get, I'm talking, entertaining while getting two different feeds in each year from the studio, from the the set, and from stage direction yeah. while talking. I'm like, I don't think there's a lot of people. This is a good job security. I don't think a lot of people could do what I'm there's doing. Not. There's not. That's a gift. I couldn't do it. And there's a lot, you know, like Sarah Gonzalez, people don't realize that when she's doing her show, 
there's somebody in her ear. She's got production in her ear all the time. Yeah. She's doing her show. I would, I never did that. I can't do it. I tried. I did it with Cowboy Channel for a couple months. Yeah, I can't have somebody uh, talking to me while I'm trying to run my mouth. Yeah. Um, unless they're feeding me notes, and that, that ain't going to work either. It's nerve-wracking. So social media, though, back to that thing. Yeah. Um, today that we're taping this, this is old news now. The world may be over by the time this comes out. It could be. But, you know, we woke up this morning, Facebook and uh, Instagram were down. Couldn't yeah. log into it. I think I had about a dozen people that texted me that said, oh, is yours messing up? I can't get into, I mean, some big influencers were messaging me saying, I can't get logged into my thing. I was like, it's election day, dude. And I was being facetious, but yeah, it's election day. It's a little, like, it's a little, I mean, I also think it, they could be doing a little test run here. Uh, maybe this is something for November, you know? What if that, this is um, your last show, Chad? It could be. Um, um, it could be. Never makes it out of the can. This is it. It could be, but it could be for a lot of reasons. <laughs> it could be for a lot of reasons. More than just Facebook going down. I loved what Elon Musk uh, <laughs> tweeted. He said, "If you're on, if you're reading this right now, it's because our servers aren't down." Yeah, you know, um, and I, that dude. He, you talk about a guy that's been red pilled. I mean, he's, you know, getting attacked will do that. Yeah, to you, getting attacked will and do being that the wealthiest you. person in the world will yeah. make you go wait. I'm being told that I'm dumb by people that make forty five thousand yeah. dollars a year and yeah. have purple hair. And I don't care what anybody says. You know, CJ always <laughs> tells me, she's like, you got to quit reading comments. I was like, no, I like you. I like to read the comments. Yeah. I get educated by the comments. Yeah. It gives me a perspective. I, it helps me see things from another angle. I value people's comments on social media. And the trolls, she's like, you can't worry about that stuff. And I'm like, well, here's the thing. If you've been doing this thing as long as I have and you get as much as I get coming at me, it's like getting mosquito bites. One's not a bad deal. You can smack that mosquito. Right. But when they're coming by the thousands, after a while, it gets a little bit annoying. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a conversation. It's supposed to be social media. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? They could shut the whole thing down. And God forbid we got to go back actually talking to people. Right. That like sucks. This today. today was weird. Sucks. I, I, I made a post. I was like joking around because I'm like, I social media is down. I had to tell people that social media is down. I needed to go on Facebook and let people know what was happening. But <laughs> yeah. meanwhile, I'm getting text messages about how everything's down. And I'm like, how am I going to tell people that yeah. things are down without being able to go on my Facebook and Instagram? If Instagram and Facebook, what I need to tell people about, it's very confusing. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I, uh, Tim Poole actually <laughs> tweeted that, that out this morning. He said, I'm fascinated by the fact that people are going on social media to tell others that social media is down. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but that was funny. Yeah, it was like pretty that. similar. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, they have us by the balls. So AT&T, they said, well, they started the solar flare thing. We knew that was stupid because a you know, solar flare ain't going to target one cell network. Uh, we began to realize that there was a glitch in their system. And what, did they give us a rebate of five bucks or something? That you had to, like, fill out paperwork. I don't think did I Did you? It. I didn't fill it out. They processed, I mean, I'm broke. I'm not that broke. They processed my automatic payment. Did they really? This morning. This morning. Oh, no, 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 no. no. My, my bill. Yeah. They, my AT&T bill. Solar Flare didn't screw that up. It, did, wasn't, in the, it wasn't in the item. <laughs> it wasn't in a line item. It was not itemized. Uh, it was the same amount that I normally pay. <laughs> um, but now this has fallen down. They really have us by the balls. I think it's one of those things where every now and then I can almost see Xi Jinping sitting there in China going, I showed them today. I showed them today what they, who did boss? Yeah. You know, and it's true. We're screwed. Yeah. We're screwed. Who your daddy? And I hear all these folks online, like I made a video recently about how if all of the funding is cut off from the illegals who are here, um, they're going to get desperate. Yeah. You know, if the power grid goes down, we got about 72 hours until the bad guys realize the good guys ain't coming. Right. You can't call 911. I mean, it's it's out. Um, And they're going to come get your shit. So, and they're going to kill you to get it. And I'll say, you know, I say things like this. People are like, well, I got my guns. I'm telling you, bro, if, if the three of us are sitting here and I got enough guns and Shy's over there, you're here. I got enough guns in this house that, that in the right circumstances, we could last a while. Yeah. Well, I got enough ammo in this that we could last a while. Not forever. But no, it, 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 but, but if 100 came down the road right now, you're not getting out of this. No. Yeah, I mean, you're not Rambo. You're not getting out of this. That's, that mob's going to get you. They're going to take you. You better save a bullet for yourself. Right. You know, I pissed CJ off one time where I scared her because I said, Listen, I said, yeah, well, this one really <laughs> got her. She was like, she teared up. I was like, listen, uh, if, if, they, if that ever happens, I said, make sure you shoot the kids and they shoot yourself. I said, you're going <laughs> to. 
What happens to the dog? Do you pull uh, a Hitler? Do you yeah, kill the dog first? Yeah, the dog's got to go for for <laughs> Eva Braun takes the whatever. But she was like, "What?" And I was like, "I was like, well, I'm just telling you, you don't you don't want to get taken alive right. in some of these situations." So, uh, <laughs> and she was like, "Why are you saying this to me?" I mean, I'm just telling you, this is real. People don't think like that though. They're like, "I got all my guns and all my ammo," and I understand there's some folks out in the country you can withstand for a little while. But you think about how many millions of people are in this country now that if, if suddenly it was the, you know, you've watched too much zombie land or something, too much Walking Dead to think you can just keep killing them. Keep killing them. These people think too, and they, they're, they've they got a survival instinct and they want to. It's a hell of a lot better than ours. Where we, I mean, yeah. you're tough, They've lived Chad. it already. Yeah. I mean, you, I'm sure you're great at a range, but there is a difference. I, I don't know the last time you felt desperation in your life to fight for your life. How many right? times, how many times have you gone to the range and you're shooting a target, you shoot the target and then what do you do? You look to see if you got it. Yeah. Like, oh, where did I hit it? Yeah. You know, or you're still, do, 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 and eventually you, you do the thing in. Well, you got a bunch of people coming at you, and boom, you shot this guy. Maybe it was lethal, maybe it wasn't. Chances are it wasn't. Right. Chances are it wasn't, because usually one bullet ain't taking a ain't person out. Anything. So, boom, there it is. They're still coming, but I don't know. Am I looking? Oh, I got to go. This There's this guy over here, and then there's this person. So I've got all these targets coming at me, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not some guy that you saw in the movies. I'm not. Right. Uh, whatever his name, Jason Statham. You're not playing a video game either. And it's like, I just, I... I I like, I, I'm big, you know, obviously second amendment supporter and, and protecting ourselves. But if we're the way, and you, you mentioned how we're funding the illegals, which, you know, screw the veterans. We don't really care about them. We're giving a crap right. ton more money. So that's why I think, and crime is already bad enough with the illegal immigrants. Uh, but once that 10,000 runs out, like, are we going to keep funding it? Probably not. There's going to be, it's an election year. We're, yeah. we're doing as much as we can. So once that money runs out, $6 an hour is no longer going to be paying their family back in Honduras, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, wherever the hell they're coming from. And that's when the crime is going to raise. And the cri and then the crime is, say Trump wins, the crime is then going to raise during 2025 and it'll be Trump's problem. Right. And they'll blame it on Trump. And I always, I, even when Trump was doing good the first couple of years, I was like, this is still... You can't you can't give all the celebration to a president in their first two years because mm -hmm. a lot of it is some of it sentiment, some of it is speculation, but a lot of it is previous policy. Right. I don't think Obama was horrible. Uh, he de first off, he deported more uh, illegal immigrants than any other president in history. Mm -hmm. So he did do some good. He stuff. He had more to deport though. He had way more to deport yeah. from the previous. Well, from Bush, which is interesting. That's a whole different spin that, on uh, Bush. Was W was horrible on the border. Horrible. He was all about horrible. It. And then we had NAFTA right before that. So the trade, I mean, we were we were set up for this fall for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then now, and this is the big thing is like, I mean, we're, we're talking about Republican politics, but we're talking about conservative politics and this new wave of, I call it MAGA, because I think that that's the newest party. And I what did what does RFK call his ticket? He's calling it like the free, freedom. I don't even know. He's got, he's got a new name for a political party. I'm like, I dig that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, is the Republicans don't, know how to get out of their own way. We talked about my belief on the abortion issue just from a from an actual standpoint of how to how to get the independent vote. But meanwhile, like Israel right now is the perfect example of us eating our own. How like, so? What do you think? So I wanted to get into that anyway. Yeah. So, so it's about. a it's the the Israel topic and I'm half Jewish. So I am more pro Israel. Granted like I know that Kanye was speaking some truth up until he started being like Hitler wasn't that bad. Uh yeah. up until that statement Hanging I was like with Fuentes right? and shit like that. <laughs> that yeah. Nick Fuentes is yeah. a piece of shit. He's a garbage like, dude. And and he see to me like people use the controlled op thing. I hate that terminology. He's somebody that is perfect for the left. Yeah. He paints the exact picture we want. Um Kanye is just nuts in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. But the whole when I when he was talking, I'm like, I was raised to have Jewish. My Jewish family talked about how Jews run Hollywood. Like that's not that's not not accurate. Like I was in Hollywood. Trust it's, me. It's it's not wrong. And even yeah. my mom, who's the one that used to say that to me, who is also converted to Christianity, was like, Anthony, that's so. How can you say these things? I'm like, yeah. because this is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't I don't know how to a better way to say yeah. it. But then you start getting to 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 Israel and Hamas and the war. And look, it's. It's bad. Like what's going on over there is bad. There's still hostages being held. Yeah, um, I think at the last count there was like 130 something, 
and th- there's a large portion that suspected dead. So. Right, and they're probably and they're like, we don't have the name. But all of that is the thing is, it's a holy war that's been going on for millennia. It's a problem. It's the way that we've all of a sudden shifted it to to the term genocide. We talked a little bit about that before we we started doing the show. But the big thing that I that is danger to me is the fact that we we decide to create a chasm in Republican voters. And you've got some people that are ultra pro-Israel, which is fine to me. It's a little bit better than being ultra pro-Palestine and being a Republican, which is just weird to me. Um, And they're talking about like, how how could you be such a Zionist cuck to think that you can, I'm like, calm down, first off. Um, (laughs) Like you Zionist cuck, you're supporting supporting genocide. I've never, never in the history of of the Jews during the Holocaust, which was an actual genocide, yeah. did any Jewish person kidnap a whole bunch of white German nationalists, whatever, yeah. and start the war. They did some shady banking stuff. I know the history. I know it's not perfect. But the fact that we've completely decided to use words like debunking genocide we use these as marketing terminologies and i don't know who's using them is it the deep state is it the whoever runs all the shit i think there's a division of vocabulary but now there's a language division but now government runs yeah and now it's baiting the republicans to hate each other and be like how dare you how dare you how dare you no i i have friends who are zionists i mean jewish friends i talked to one just the other day he just he just spent three months in in israel and i mean i have those guys and they're like Chad, you're a Zionist, right? And I'm like, no, I'm not a Zionist. I like I, I believe in the right of free people to protect and defend themselves. I don't think the government of Israel is some kind of holy correct deal. I, I don't think that the that the the people who populated uh, Israel in 1948 are God's chosen people. Right. I, I don't believe that. Those are Ashkenazi Jews. They're European Jews that came in, and that's a whole other debate that we can have. The government of Israel has done a lot of nefarious things. They've done a lot of wild and crazy things. But at the end of the day, Hamas is a known terrorist organization that is funded and sponsored by the largest state sponsor of terror, and that's Iran. Right. I don't like that. Um, and those guys need to be, they need to cease to exist militarily and politically. Uh, if Israel, and you say, well, so America created it. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we I, I'm not America. I, like, I'm an American, but I'm not the federal government. I'm yeah. not the CIA. I'm telling you as a citizen, I'm fair-minded. I, I, those that shouldn't exist. Yeah. Well, you know, America created the Taliban and ISIS. Like, okay, they should we cease didn't. to exist too. I, I, I mean, listen, the CIA should cease to exist. So should, so should the FBI and the DOJ, all the alphabet agencies. I mean, if we're going to be fair, I'm not for those guys either. Right. So you know, the people that want to hide behind civilians, women, children, all the again, those are buzzwords too. Oh, they're killing women and children. No, they, you know, they're killing everybody. Everybody. I mean, they're just winning by a lot. It's like a it's like a NFL team playing against, uh, um, unfortunately, a middle school team. It's yeah. that's not genocide. That's an ass beating. And it's and it's and also, like you said, I don't as somebody that is more pro Israel, I'm not thinking the Israeli government is anywhere near on the up and up. Like right. I'm pretty sure the the most sophisticated uh, just government just like the in American the world, government, just like the American other, yeah. government, but one of the most sophisticated governments in the world. You're going to tell me they didn't know what was about some somebody knew, somebody knew the way about, that popped off. Yeah, yeah, somebody knew, and they it was a bait it was a bait and switch. But unfortunately, they're giving the they're giving the global option to say you go ahead and it, you go ahead and give us the the hostages back, and it's a ceasefire. Yeah, and nobody's allowing that part to happen. And it's like, look. If they give back what whoever is still alive of the 130 people, and and the the Jew and 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 the Israeli government continues to bomb the living shit out of a, a lot of areas that yes have Hamas but also have a lot of uh, citi- civilians, yep. then we could have a discussion. But as of right now, n- no demands have been met to give those hostages. Well, they back. just had a they just had a talk. I think it was in Paris. There were yeah. two places. One was in Paris, and Israel said we will give you a six week truce. You got to release, I think it was 35 or 40 hostages. Not even all of them. You got to release like 35. We'll release 200 suspected terrorists Which that is we hold. Stupid. Stupid. Uh-huh. And then they said, they said, but you've got to see, Hamas has got to cease to exist pol- politically and militarily. Uh, and they said, no, we're not going to do that. Now, at the same time, the leaders of Hamas are all billionaires. They're living in Doha in Qatar. And Lindsey Graham, when he should be going home to South Carolina to meet with his constituents, is getting on a jet and flying to meet with people in Doha. We got um, uh, Texas A&M is running, you know, its institution over there. And all of our intellectual property that they come up with, the research and stuff at Texas A&M, 
there in Doha, uh, Qatar gets to keep it. They, it 100% belongs to them. And you want to ask me, whose side am I on? Mine, bitch. Yeah. Like, I'm on nobody's side at this point. Yeah. None of them. I don't trust any of them at this point. Israel's going to give back 200 known terrorists. Hamas won't release 30 people. They won't take a six-month truce. The only people crying for a ceasefire. Uh, they only want it one-sided. They want Israel to stop so shooting. They don't want Gaza. They don't want the Palestinians or the, I should say, Hamas right. shooting back. They don't care if they shoot back. Yeah. They don't give a shit if, if, if you know, missiles are hitting the Iron Dome and dropping into the streets. And people don't know about that. Like, that's a da- that's been a daily occurrence in Israel. Yeah. I was supposed to be there time. right now. Yeah. I was supposed to be there right now. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's a bad time right now, but it's all, like, there's missiles all I've heard it's a weekly occurrence that the Iron Dome has to be activated and and, and shoot yeah. down these missiles. Yeah. So people are like, well, whose side are you on? It's just like it's just like Putin or Zelensky. None of them. Neither. They're yeah. both garbage. As as a half Jew, I really I'm 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 on the side of letting them deal their own holy bullshit out. Like, <laughs> like that's I mean, this is it's never gonna unfortunately, like we're never gonna have world peace. That's just not a it's not a rational thought. Like, I don't know when. God, I don't know when Jesus is going to come back. I've got no idea. Not as long as there's money in war. Uh, not as long as there's warmongers and ra- saber rattlers out there who are going to benefit and get both power and money out of the conflicts that are happening. Um, and, you know, look look what Joe Biden did. I mean, Trump didn't put us in any war. And then sh- as soon as Biden gets in there, he does that botched bullshit evacuation from Afghanistan, demonstrates on the global stage how weak we are. Putin invades Ukraine. Next thing you know, we're in, we're, we're with Ukraine. We're with, you know, Hamas. We, you know, we're Ukraine. It's stupid. And because 50 years in Washington, D.C. taught Joe Biden one thing, wars make money. And now we got Bidenomics and supposedly the best economy. And you know what they're doing? They're funneling that money to Ukraine and the Ukraine's funneling that money down to Central and South America and they're just using that for human trafficking to bring people to the southern border that ultimately brings down the United States of America. Right. We're screwed. It's I it, it's we're we're at a really weird spot. Now <laughs> you, you brought up you brought up warmongers like Lindsey Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham. I think Graham. Is, but now do you think that he was traveling to the Middle East for the nefarious purposes, or do you think he's got a male side piece? I think there? it's a little bit of both. A little bit of both. I he's think over he's there, got, got one of those dancing boys. Yeah, I think so you know? too. Let's. I mean, let's let's call it spade a spade again. That was the thing when they <laughs> when Ralph took Jimmy fishing and that little yeah. public service announcement. Somebody in the comments said, "And Jimmy grew up to be Lindsay, a, a, a congressman from South Carolina." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So that that so you I want more of this. You got to work. Yeah, tonight. you got to shovel more. shit. We're you got to shovel shit. All right. Um, <laughs> It's speaking of of Lindsey Graham, this is podcasting, people. <laughs> this is way this is way more fun. I mean, I liked your other Heck show because yeah. it had the big studio and stuff. Uh, it, yeah, it was great, but it was it was so it was so constricted with yeah. the commercials and all this stuff. So. See, uh, you cut down all the costs. All you need is one Asian guy to. Run I got I got a little there. Singaporean dude <laughs> who got trafficked here. <laughs> We're blink, never letting him go. Blink twice if you need help. And the beautiful thing about I can't about tell Shia, if you're blinking. I'm sorry. I you know, Shia, Shia is, <laughs> I met, I met, yesterday I met the guy who recommended Shia to the company. And because, you know, I was like, okay, wait, I'm going to need a producer that's on site. And they're like, we'll find you somebody. And I'm like, uh, uh I hope it's somebody that understands my way of just sense of humor and way of thinking and yeah. just off the cuff kind of way. And, and uh, I'm like, because that could go wrong real fast, yeah, real fast. And uh, thank God for Shider. So he's, I met those people. I was like, y'all did good. So I keep joking with him. I'm like, dude, if you think if you're thinking about leaving, you're not, <laughs> you're not. You will be in, a, you will be in a closet upstairs, <laughs> locked. In. I'll let you out on Tuesdays, Mondays and Tuesdays. It's time to push buttons, fella. <laughs> you will call the guests by their right name. <laughs> 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 Before we got on, we just we just taped with Larry Taunton. And so he was convinced that and he was calling uh, Anthony Larry. <laughs> so honest mistake. <laughs> honest mistake. I yeah. usually get Andrew, which is really awkward because Kelly's ex-boyfriend name is Andrew. Oh, and because no every people have called me Andrew my whole life. Andy and Andrew. I don't know. Yeah. But no point. Whatever. No. Yeah. Y'all uh y'all getting along pretty good? You still like each other? Uh, yeah, for the most part. For the most part. It's hard. There's like, gotta be a catharsis. I mean, CJ and I have that. I got to tell you something. So I, I came to this epiphany. I got to be careful how I say it because Kelly's like, I'm just going to. Is she going to watch this? I'm sure she'll I love watch you, this. Kelly. I didn't she say this. <laughs> but like, I've come to the conclusion, no matter how a woman votes, mm-hmm. they're all Democrats. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to explain why. Okay. So you know what the Democrats do? They, they, they say, you know, to you, you're a fascist whilst being fascist. Right. 
women do the same thing. Oh yeah. So it, if it is something like, if I buy supplements off of something I see on TV, or if like I've got a friend in a, in a network marketing company, I'm like, I kind of like these products or whatever it is. You are so gullible. You are so easily baited, all these different things. And then meanwhile, their closet is stocked full oh, of yeah. shit they bought the last four years. Oh, yeah. Or like, I don't know about you, I'm regular. I, I, I every morning, I go <laughs> twice. I go twice in the morning. And sometimes if I gotta stop, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm, I'm healthy. And she legit calls me out all the time. She's like, you got IBS. I go, just because I go the right amount of times in a day and I'm not constantly constipated like somebody, <laughs> you're you're literally have IBS, but constantly you're telling me that I have IBS because you know you don't like the fact that I have to waste thirty minutes. God, in the that's to go funny, to dude. Relationships are funny. Like uh, CJ and I, uh, we all went out on her birthday. Um, took the whole family out. Went had a great dinner, big party. Thirty two, she turned. No I wish she wishes. Uh, we both wish. I'm not gonna say all she. I was, was. trying to. She's say not that. forty. I'll say that she's not forty even though I keep telling her she is. Um, <laughs> and uh, something came up. She said something, and I kind of asked a question because it was something I didn't know. And you're with all this family, and you're trying to keep it quiet. It's like, why didn't you tell me like that? And and so after a while, she was like, I was like, I was like, God, that pisses me off you didn't tell me, you know? And I'm not going to go into what it was. She's like, I don't understand why you're mad at me. I'm like, I'm not mad at you. You're getting mad at me. I just didn't know what, I was like, I didn't know why you didn't tell me that. That little detail about our life. And she's like, why are you mad at me? And so I was like, okay, so there's tension. And then we go to their family all leaves. We say we stay for one more drink at the bar and we go in there. And she's like, okay, let's get this out of the way. And I'm like, easy. She's like, I don't want you yelling at me. I said, I didn't yell at you. Like I'm literally purposefully keeping my voice. You're raising down. your voice right now. I can hear it, Chad. You, you I can, can hear, hear it, the Chad. tone. I can see your tone. <laughs> and so uh, and so she would wait. She was like, she was like, I just feel like you're just you're being unfair and you're saying these things. And she would always wait to raise her voice. She'd wait for the bartender or the bar back to come down to our end of the bar. And that's when she'd be like, and I just don't like it when you treat me that way. And I was like, what the like, <laughs> I promise I don't hit her. <laughs> like, and it's like, dude, I was like, why are you doing this? You're a woman. At least you have time to go out. Freaking woman. She doesn't have horses, which therefore puts her in a whole Oh, dude, bucket. never have a hobby that eats, which I know that's Kelly's world. I mean, that's her life um, in business to, to, to compete. But I've always said never have a hobby that eats. Yeah. Dogs are enough. Yeah. That's Dogs. why I don't have an OnlyFans. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, but no, honestly, rodeo is a weird one. And I know you, do you still have the bull in PBR? Yeah. That's, I mean, PBR is at least a money-making endeavor. I have, I, so I've started working a lot more in rodeo and mm -hmm. Western sports my kind of people, our kind of people. And I, I've liked that, but like there's shady people everywhere. everywhere. Uh, Cowboy Channel, the owner is an interesting mm -hmm. human being. Uh, but the across the board, what I've realized and why I want to get more involved is I see somebody like Kelly who was ranked 18th in the world last year um, amidst another group of, you know, a bunch of people that are just outside of the NFR, National Finals Rodeo. That's the top 15 in the world. And they make, maybe that's where they make profit on the year. Right. It's an amazingly money losing situation. Oh, I can remember guys that were going to NFR and I would, my friends, you know, whether it was Trevor Brazil or, or Tough Cooper, whoever it was, and they were like, we spent half a million dollars this year just going up and down the road. Just brutal. Minimum. And they're, I mean, they're not making it's, it's just, and it's sad because now, now guys at that level have sponsors, which helps them. To break even. To break even. Yeah. Barely. And it's yeah. like, it, to me, as a sport, and yeah, we we unfortunately are like, oh, they're, kid, they're roping a calf. Oh, that's really sad. Mm -hmm. So there's that group of people out there that think it's animal cruelty. Meanwhile, they're getting processed McDonald's. It's, you know, right. what they do to those animals is actually sad. Um, so it, it, across the board, though, people start to ask for autographs for these people. These are, these are becoming celebrities and and if they marketed it a little bit better i do think the prca needs a little bit of help with that uh the pro rodeo association and i think that with cowboy channel they've and yellowstone it's this perfect opportunity right now so i'm like yeah. i feel like i'm in it at the right time i work with a company called next gen and we're like entry software but we're growing the media aspect side of it right. uh, which is really funny because have you ever heard of steve kenyon oh yeah so steve and i are the two like cowboy channel rejects we're the ones who are just kind of let go unceremoniously mm -hmm. And we're working together to create content for next gen. But it's like, there's such an opportunity in this sport and people love it. Like I went to the Houston rodeo last night. Like you've got people in there that are so jacked up, not just for the concert, because Hank Williams was fun to watch. He's also Biden age practically. Yeah, he's- People he's are there now for the rodeo. Elderly. It, he's elderly. It used yeah. to be for the concert. And now it's like, people are really getting into this stuff. Yeah. Time to capitalize on it. There's no excuse for a top 20 in the world barrel racer 
to not be able to pay our bills. It's terrible. Yeah. And 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 I thank God that I've had a finally after being canceled, like you kind of brought up for years, I finally have started to get paid and, and to for the MC work that I'm doing. I've got to work cool events. And thankfully, thank God that that's allowed us to, you know, even kill it. And you helped me out last year. We talked to a lawyer about what was going on. Oh, yeah. I forgot it's, about that. There's yeah. I mean, I love the Western way of life, but there's some shady assholes yeah, in this bad. business as well. You get so. animals involved, dude. People always, yeah, I won't get into that story. Sorry. But yeah, you start getting into animals and then the animal owners and then the doctors. It, it, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. All right. The Art of Doubling Down. I like that title. I really like the blurb on the back by me. God, you know. Every failure can pave the way to success in business and life leading to ultimate happiness. Can they get this in all the book places? Uh, yeah, it actually releases April 2nd. All right. So if you're really slow on the release, it'll be right around the right time. Yeah, but it'll be closer. Yeah. We'll give, eh, well, this, this show will come out next week. Probably. Yeah. But no, um, it's uh, my right. first book. Pretty exciting. It only took three years to write 170 pages. I No, I like this. I'm working on a book that it may be a, about this size. Um and uh, it's going to trigger some people, that's for sure. What is it going to be about? Well, we're, we're talking about people who just can't, um, men particularly, that, you know, people don't live up to their potential anymore because the potential has been taken away from them and they've been told that all that's evil. Yeah. You know, they can't be that person that God created them to be because, uh, you know, the, the society, everything is against them. And, uh, you know, how to take that back. So... You know, it's another way of telling the same old story that a lot of people are telling. You're telling it in this way as well. Uh, Sounds so, like toxic masculinity, if you ask me. Yeah, it's very toxic. Uh, <laughs> men, men, you know, are created to be something way more than what we are these days. You know, we're shoving testosterone in our ass trying to get caught up, and then we're taking estrogen blockers so we don't get tits. And, uh, you know, yeah. I haven't done push-ups in a I'm little bit. I'm telling you, dude. And it's it's bad. Have you ever taken that stuff, TRT? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I. So when I, interestingly enough, what kind allegedly, of, allegedly, what kind of deodorant do you use? I know it's a weird question. I don't know. Like, do you just use like Degree or like? No, one of those? Yeah, something like that, or Old Spice or something. So, you when can I, tell me it's got bad shit in it. Well, I mean, we know it's got bad shit in it. But or get rid of your stink or make more. I, I know I was as a guy that sweats a lot. I never had like a like a sweat. I never had the sweaty armpit issue. Yeah. That wasn't my thing. Um, but what I know, so I got my testosterone level tested right when I started dating Kelly. And I always had a really high level of energy, but it was like, I didn't care about the stuff that I cared about when I was in my early 30s. Right. Wink, wink. But like, I just didn't care. I was I was, I was, was more worried about work. I, I was able to work 15 hours a day. I'm like, my testosterone's gotta be fine. I went, I got checked. I had the healthy testosterone of a 65 year old. <laughs> it was 312. I, I, I know that feeling. Yeah, and so I'm like, and I'm, and Kelly's like, you gotta take testosterone. I'm like, I, so I've, I've been a granola since before granola was awake and cool. Like right. I was raised, you know, a non-vaccine kind of person and all that stuff. Um, so I made a couple switches. One, I drank more water. And two, I switched my deodorant. I didn't think that was going to change my testosterone. I just did it because I did a Tony Robbins conference. And they're like, get rid of the crappy. So I switched to really? Squatch. Um, All right. And honestly, it's for me, it was miserable because I get, I tried in the past and I get rashes. So for like two months, I got rashes. And then finally it stopped. Why? Wow, was it just not letting you sweat? or? So no, it's, it's apparently the really like good for you stuff. It's just your body is so used to the aluminum and the chemicals that are really? in the other deodorant. So I made the switch. So anyways, I retested my testosterone this last year. Um, I mean, my, my energy levels are all the same, but I'm like, I'm going to test it. And it was 715 without ever taking any supplements, anything, anything. So I'm like, water, my diet's a little was a little better last year. But ultimately, if I were going to think of the biggest life change that I've made was switching deodorant. Deodorant. Weird. Yeah, I don't know, man. There's a rash involved. That reminds me of my sex life. <laughs> CJ know about that? Oh, she knows. <laughs> oh, she knows. Like um, I'll check that stuff out. It's and, a, and it's not bad. And it, what's weird is I am very sensitive, so it's like one of the one of the versions of it I guess still get a rash from. But yeah, I I use the one that smells like wood something wood not pine. Yeah, you do. I do. That's what helped the testosterone. Now you got True. wood again. I got wood again from the wood. I started doing I started doing the the pellets every four months, mm. and it was a game changer for get me. The, right in the. No, it's not oh, like that. that. It's, it's not oral? a suppository. No, no, they cut you. They they give what? you a little incision on the top of your ass and stick them in there. Really? And then they they dissolve over four months. Does Lindsey Graham like to watch that? <laughs> Lindsey Graham did it, bitch. Did <laughs> <laughs> I got to call Lindsey today, as a matter of fact. Hey, Lindsey. You do. Hey, girl. I mean, what's <laughs> up? Uh, no, I, who it, votes it was for a, those? It, I, dude, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who votes for any of these people. Romney, uh, uh, 
I don't, I don't know who votes for these people. I can't. I mean, John Cornyn. How's John Cornyn keep getting back in the Senate uh, in Texas? I mean, he's he's garbage. You know, he's he's not a conservative. That's for sure. Uh, and none of these people. They are, you know, political players. Somebody asked me about running for office. You know, a Washington position. It was specifically about, you know, against Dan Crenshaw. And I was like, well, first of all, my buddy Jameson Ellison. He's he's doing it. And, and they're like, yeah, but I think we all think you should do it and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't want to go to Washington D.C. Like, I love Texas. I care about state politics. I don't want to go to Washington, D.C. Why would you go to a place that even the Republicans allegedly voted for Nikki Haley? Yeah, when you got 670,000 people, uh, 670,000 people in the Beltway of Washington, D.C., and what was it like? She got 1,200 votes. Yeah. And won. Yeah. Can, I, are you able to change the camera angle? I don't know if you know. This is why I wore shorts. I'm getting my ankles licked. Yeah, right now no, she can't. She can't go that low. Oh, dang. You know, I've got a theory that dogs. That's why they lick us. Is they think they're petting us back. <laughs> you know, they like just just remember that your dog thinks she's recipro reciprocating. It. I mean, yeah. I'm getting a full ankle job. Yeah, going she's on she's a licker. That's for sure. <laughs> that's why I sleep with her in the bed every single night. Biscuits right there underneath me. Yeah. It, so are you a you're a you're a dog sleep in the bed kind of person? Oh yeah. What's I told, the purpose I told of C animals without it? I told I told CJ the other night. I woke up. Or I texted her the other morning. I was headed out to go do a show up in Oklahoma. And she said, how do you, how'd you sleep? Because I don't typically sleep that well. And, um, you know, she doesn't live with me. She doesn't live here. Every now and then, every now and then we do a little spin a night, you know. And so um, I texted her. I said, I, I sent her a picture. I said, here's, you know, it was all three dogs in the bed that morning. And I said, I slept great. I said, isn't it weird that I can sleep all night long with three dogs in the bed better than I can sleep with you? Like, you're like a toddler. I mean, she up and down and bouncy and then my arms asleep and then the next day i'm like do you remember any of that she's like no no, no. i can when i sleep alone i can literally if, if the bed is made i can sleep get out of bed and just take the covers and do right one. back on it like i don't Same move way. i used to make a joke I, but you can't you can't even say it on your show anywhere but i used to sleep like a version of a victim yeah a something victim because i i just i don't move i don't breathe i don't do anything and i sleep like a baby <laughs> In hotels, I'm the same way. Yeah. Like, it's almost like a personal challenge. I want to see if I can not F up the bed. Yeah. It just, I'll just peel the thing back, get in it. And I sleep like go. a baby. And I'll, I like, I like sleeping with dogs. I just, I can't imagine. I didn't have dogs till I was like 38. Really? And I don't know how I went through life without them. And I don't know. It's because you're half Jewish. It is. It's totally, I mean, they're expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got a dog. I wanted to do his accounting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, we were talking about Portnoy. It could be uh, Miss Peaches and have 652,000 Yeah, Instagram Dave Portnoy followers. gets a dog. In two weeks, his dog's got 650,000 followers. <sighs> That's a cute dog. I mean, it's not a cute The thing is, it, he doesn't train it. It's eating all the remotes, and he's like, it was abused. And it was. Well, he's a billionaire. He can do buy a new remote. And that was like, uh, so we had, funny story, we had, uh, Sarah had Laura Trump on her show the other day. And so Laura comes in, and she's got a little entourage with her. They go in the makeup room. And when we're all done with the show, I'm walking out and the makeup girl, she looks at me and she says, hey, Chad, she said, um, somebody left a really expensive purse in the makeup room and I'm worried about it because I got to leave, but I'm going to shut that door. And so I go in there. She was about to tape on another show and I asked two of the girls that were with her. I said, did you leave a Louis bag? And it was one of those like five, $6,000 bags. It was yeah, a big, not a start of Louis. It was, it was, it was like a, a big satchel. Louis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like, a, I know Louis. Yeah, I know Louie because I used to be married to somebody that knew Louie. Um, it's so uh, like a five, six thousand dollar bag. And they said, no, we think that's Laura's. And so <clears throat> I interrupted the taping where they were doing. They weren't started yet. And I said, Laura, listen, uh, your bag, your Louie is in makeup. And she goes, there's not a lot of cash in it. I'm not worried about it. And I go, I know that. I've already been through it. <laughs> I, I said, but um, I said, I know I've been through it. <laughs> I said, I just want to let you know they're going to shut that door, but that's where it's at. And she goes, I I'm not worried about it. And then I was walking away and I was like, she's a Trump. Yeah. She doesn't care about a $5,000 purse. No. Like, what's the big deal? She probably got 70 of them. You know, if, if it gets to the point where Donald needs that purse to start paying his legal bills, then you yeah. know they're in trouble. Then they're in trouble. She's like, oh God, that was, oh, God, that, I gotta that, that was going back. to the pawn shop. Yeah. I was taking that to, you know, <laughs> whatever, Las Vegas, the pawn show, whatever, Pawn Stars. <laughs> 
I got to I got to get that. That's actually how you were going to get paid if he was going to take it. Just so you know. Yeah. Um, I should have taken it. I should have. I mean, at least take it like a hundred dollar bill because then it's a special hundred dollar bill. Yeah, she Trump's hundred dollars. Virtually gave me permission. I mean, she did. Yeah. Which like I'm not worried about that bag, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Let's see about when you can't find it. <laughs> uh, can't say that if a woman says I don't care about my body you can't just take that then it yeah, becomes a, it's exactly. a very gray area it's, exactly. uh, it's, it's frowned upon um, it's like CJ said to me the other night she said you know I like this is mine she's talking about her body she was, we were making a bigger point this is mine I was like I don't want it can I borrow it <laughs> just for maybe three minutes maybe four you have it right back I promise wait for uh, the time change it's gonna go for an hour um <laughs> It's it was the last thing I was going to say. Um, so we have we talked about Clay Clark, the like reawakened tour. I know, Rose, you said you're going to. I was right. on it. Were you on it? I was on it. Oh, nice. A couple times. Nice. I'm uh, so I'm supposed to go this weekend. Clay's an interesting dude. He is interesting. And honestly, he's more middle ground, than, even though he's got some ultra rights. That oh, he's a common sense guy. He regards is. that. He, he's he's a, he's a, he's a wackadoodle by most standards, uh, but he knows how to make money. One hundred percent. I mean that's that's a fact. But he, um, um, yeah, he does. Clay Clark, y'all follow him. The weird, been on my show numerous times. The weird thing about like when I because I've done some blunt force discussions with him. You, I could not. We didn't even talk about anything wrong. We actually called out some of the lunacy of the right. Show was immediately shut down by all social medias. Really? In, uh, not Instagram, uh, uh, YouTube, all of it. You put his name in the description, it's gone. Just like Dr. Artis, same yeah. thing. You Producers, put in, don't gone. put, don't mention Clay Clark. Yeah, sorry, don't say that. Uh, but anyway, so so I might be going to a podcast or event this weekend with Casey and Cash. That'll be the first time I see Cash since he got out of jail. That's cool. Uh, we got when we're done, we got to Facetime him because he wanted to talk to you. Yeah, that'd and be he's great. He's got. We didn't even get about that, but he uh, he literally has. Talked to you on the phone about it once. Uh, he's got an 80 minute interview with Derek Chauvin in prison. Yeah, you told me about that. That's Kel. Uh, I, I still haven't heard it, but I, I had a guy, I had a message uh, this morning. I woke up to an email through my website and a guy had sent me, a, and I'm not going to beat the guy up because he sent it from a good place. There was no hate in the thing. He said, You just don't have a Christian view of the death of George Floyd. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't respond to it because my smart ass wanted to say, listen, if I could wake the guy back up and kill him again, I probably would. Like, I, I understand, but Derek Chauvin, that's, mm, that was, no. I, Th that, I mean, that, the yeah. He wasn't, I mean, I don't think, so this is what Cash says, and I'll, and I'll say this briefly. Um, they Can I actually say that if I could wake the guy up and kill him again? I didn't mean that as a joke. This is a comedy podcast. Yeah, you can, uh, he would it's wake him up podcast. and and uh, the, the slap uh, contest, yeah, you know, yeah, those I things mean, that, you yeah. know. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, buddy, where you been? Hey. Um, you want to smoke a J? Uh, <laughs> he said, well, it's, we got some fentanyl. now. Yeah, we got some fentanyl. Um, No, so Cash talked to, to Derek. So the reason why Cash became a big deal is because of the Black Lives Matter thing. He wasn't even conservative until that point. And then he had 400,000 followers by the time he went to jail from J6. But it's ironic and full circle that after all the different prisons and jails that he went to, he ended up in the same place as Derek Chauvin. And he says, it's wild. yeah, it's really kind of weird. And nobody would talk to Derek in that because at that point it was federal prison. It wasn't a J6 prison. So when he talked to um, Derek, he, he this is what he says. Derek they asked him, would you do it the same if you had the opportunity to do it again? And he goes, uh, absolutely not. I would actually beat the living shit out of him instead. And he goes, I mean, I got in this much trouble for no reason. Like I would have, I would have done over. And that's kind of, that was his MO anyways, as a cop, like he had already gotten in trouble a lot of times. So he was actually somebody that like his, his repentance was saying like, I would have, I would have been way more physical. Cause if he was going to die anyways, at least I he kind of was like, I would have got my licks in. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. I would have taken it to him. Yeah. Well, I think both the other Floyd, pieces of shit. Yeah. I think that's kind of the overriding theme behind it all. But I also, I also would like to know who Derek was prior to trial because I a trial like that that is completely unfair and unjustified. That'll change you. That'll change you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also easy to talk big when you're already in prison. Right. And say some things. Granted, you're. I mean, he, he after that conversation, he got stabbed twenty two times. So that he did. It was rough. I can't imagine. I mean karma i guess wild deal and you know there's people who know things that we'll never know like we're talking about who's going to run in, in november and that kind of stuff like who on the they have that strategy all mapped out i mean mm -hmm. all these different things we talk about that are conspiracies and we speculate into the situation people get mad at us simply because we speculate into the news stories that we read and we're like okay i try to because i try to find the human element of these things and say okay well what was you know what was really going on here 
Um, people get mad because you have these opinions or ideas. Or right. So, but if somebody out there knows this stuff. I like when the people on the right get mad at you for not knowing something. Like, how did you not read that article? I'm like, do you know how much I read? Like, yeah. Yeah. I sorry I missed that. Yeah, or the people, or the people who are like, you didn't call out Trump enough for Operation Warp Speed. I'm like, well, I didn't know I was on your litmus test. I, like, I didn't know that I was being measured by your standard of, because I have called him out. I think I did it twice on this episode, uh, and I'm like, I, I have. It's been a point of conversation, but I'm not sitting around making it a deal. And we share that opinion yeah. too. And I mean, that's one of the reasons I was like, I'm open to listening to DeSantis. Like, I'm open to listening to Vivek. Right. I still like a lot of other people. I mean, what do you want me to do? You want me to now that Trump's the candidate, run his ass down, get on yeah. social media, and just run his ass down, and be like, he lied, he did all these things, he was wrong, he was wrong, he was wrong. Oh yeah, well, uh, uh, um, people are going to go. What are you trying to get people to vote for Biden? You know, I think absolutely it's, not. I think he does a strategy that's even though I disagree with everything with far, like th there's my biggest topic is pharma. Like, I think that whole thing is garbage. The fact that he hired the Pfizer guy and all that stuff. I get it. It's bad. But I think there is some strategy to it to try to those to those right leaning voters that are like the vaccine's good. Like people are going to vote for Trump that are Trump voters anyways, even the, vac the people yeah. like us. So it's like, I think he's trying to play this middle game and I think he, you know, hopefully he does it well enough. That's all. And I'm I'm afraid that RFK, even though I really like RFK, I'm afraid he's going to steal. People are like, he's going to be taking Biden's. I'm like, no, nah, I think he's going to be taking a pretty equal amount. I, pretty I think equal amount. Could go either way. Yeah. And I know Steve Dace the other day tweeted out, he said, would you be okay if Trump, you know, chose Tulsi Gabbard? I'm, I'm not okay with that. And I like Tulsi as a human being. I, I think she's a good person. She's got some whack ideas in my opinion, but like, nah, I'm not, I'm not down with anybody that wants to come get my guns or, you know, any stuff like why that. Why do you say, out of curiosity, why do you say that about the, just because of some of the bills that she's tried to. Yeah. And then I, she's also been outspoken about gun control yeah. and I don't necessarily like her abortion stance. I mean, if we're going to get into that, but um, yeah, I think you're playing both ends against the middle, trying to be likable. And I don't think likable is what's going to win anything right now. Um, it, yes and no. I mean, the argument can be both, made on both sides, but you're, they're not going to like Trump. No. Trump ain't going to make himself more likable. But That's why I caught but, hell when I, somebody posted a video the other day could, trying to call me out. They picked one thing where I said, <laughs> where I said Trump's not going to apologize for the thing. Get over it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm not getting over it. And I'm like, listen, he's not going to. You get over it, you vote for him, or you get Biden or whoever the regime puts in there. Um, and you're like, well, I don't, I'm not getting over it. I'm not going to vote for it. I'm just not going to vote at all. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, you can take me out of context all you want to. I think that's gonna, the point I was trying to make. We're going to struggle to not have politicians on the right because we're so tribal. We're going to struggle to not have, uh, like people like you are going to end up being the future of, of, of Republican politics, Trump future, or the current of Republican politics, because being so tribal, we look at voting records mm -hmm. and like a Tulsi Gabbard, perfect example. Um, RFK Jr., his previous stance on climate change. Well, that doesn't count because he wasn't. Scratch that whole thing. But Tulsi is a perfect example. Dan Crenshaw, he's got some huge issues. Huge. But huge, huge issues. But there is there is a game to politics that people have to play. And I think people uh, underestimate that. They're like, "Did you? I can't get with this person because they, they voted with this bill. It's like, if you're in D.C., and it sucks. Yeah. You have to play the game. And people are like, "Well, I want somebody. I want somebody that's going to stand firm and not play the game." Guess what? They wouldn't be in Senate right now. They're they not wouldn't be, be like, there. They're so not when get they actually, done. so we won't, we won't give a chance to somebody that has a, a, a small blemish on a voting record because they're going to be like, they voted, they were on a pro-choice bill or something along those, or they're on a Second Amendment, anti-Second Amendment bill. They were, like Trump and the bump stocks. I. Get rid of the damn bump socks. They don't help you shoot anyways. If you're uh, gonna, he said it. I didn't say. I, it. I know you don't. I don't. You, I, no, I agree. They don't help you. I think it's an infringement it's on an the Second Amendment. It's an infringement, but they if, don't help you shoot. Um, and I can create my own bump stock if I needed to uh, with a belt loop. Um, if you're going to give one thing, you like I and I know give an inch, they take a mile. Like, well, they haven't taken anything since then. They talk a lot about it, but they haven't. But I just think that. The reason why Trump came to power on the right is because he doesn't have a voting record that we could fight against. This guy was a Democrat his whole life. Whole life. And we give him a pass because we don't analyze his voting record because he didn't have one. Well, that's why I said whenever, you know, and I, I won't, people have heard me say this a million times, I didn't understand Trump. 2015, it didn't make sense to me. I was like, okay, Ted Cruz is the guy. I mean, I, I just, it just didn't make any sense. Right. But I also said, you know, figuring out which person to vote for is like figuring out which venereal disease you're most okay living with for the next four to eight years. Right. So anyway, all right, Anthony Russo. <laughs> uh, the podcast called Truth Will Set You Free. There you go. 
I made it easy for you. Cheat you did. Uh, get the book, too. Uh, the Art of Doubling Down. There it is. Bam. Pow, you didn't put your picture on the back, dude. I, it's in there someplace. It's me and a, I think, am I wearing a cowboy hat in it? You probably are, because you know why? I'm country It now. makes you a pimp. You didn't wear one. No, I didn't. It's in the barn, though. It is in a barn. It is in a barn. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, I like it. I like how you mentioned Kelly right first in the acknowledgments. I don't want to get beaten. Bro, and she could take your ass. Oh, I had seen tough. that girl in action. She is tough. She's she she's a trip, bro. We got to get together soon. Um, get her and CJ together. My God, the room will explode. Is, is CJ a um, is she a introvert or an extrovert? Oh God, she's she is <laughs> the word introvert. She knows nothing of. Oh, see, Kelly's a big introvert, but yeah. then she opens up. She opens she up. Opens we up. also this is a little alcohol. Another C, CJ. Uh, people have heard me say it. Oh, she God, makes coffee it. nervous. Uh, CJ is hyper. She texted me yesterday and she said, let's go to Virginia for my cousin's wedding. And I was like, when? And she's like, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, well, I've got something the day after that. She goes, oh, we can go there. And I was like, she goes, oh, no, I can't. My kid's got something. And she goes, but let's go two days early and we'll go on a date and then go to the rehearsal dinner. And I was like, no, like, I don't need to go to North Carolina, Virginia, or wherever it was to go on a date just to go to the rehearsal dinner. I'm not doing it. She's like that though. Kelly's autistic. But I got her off of that thing and I said, uh, fact. They, they all are. No, she, we took a test. And honestly, as much as I was like, babe, you're- She's straight up spectrum, huh? She, we, we, she did the 93 question test and I can see it because she's like, when we talk on the phone, if I'm on speakerphone and there's any extra noises, like little stuff. And I, again, my dad was legally blind and handicapped. So I can I can make these comments. But no, she, she <laughs> might- half Jew. She, I'm half Jewish. So many things. Uh, she might actually be like there's certain things that like i saw her take the test and she took it honestly and it rated her on the like one end of like a little light on the spectrum which would i try to give a pass to some of our fighting because i'm like she's special <laughs> she's got issues mm -hmm. all right she, and she claims it not it's not me she owns it but anyway <laughs> sorry that's a whole different she's cute she can get away with the it. last all minute right. she can cute she can get away with it <laughs> All right, watchchad.com for all the fun stuff is. Check me out on the road. Going to be all over the place. Watchchad.com. Um, what else? That's all. That's all I really want to tell you. Leave me a rating and review. I appreciate that. It helps us in the rankings. Thanks to Anthony. It's good to see you, buddy. I'm glad you were in Houston. We were able to come up and, and hang out for a little while. Look at us working on two hours. We did good. Yeah, my uh, the, the powers that be with the behind this podcast are like, you got to have longer conversations. The algorithms, they, they like that. So, I'm good for that. And I'm like, well, I know somebody I can do that with. And you were in town. And Lindsey Graham is the only other guy that can go along with another guy. An hour <laughs> Kitty, and 15 minutes. Kitty, though. That's called oh, a callback. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a callback. God, uh, maybe we can find ourselves a Senate staffer. Uh, take them to a hearing room. All right, guys. I love you. God bless you. Where am I looking? Look at my little flag that nobody ever sees. It says the Chad Prather Show on there. That's where it's at. All right, guys. We will talk to you next time. Love you. God bless you. Bye.